Yo, what's up? It's hello there, folks. Uh, so, might be a bit of an unorthodox video, but I was just admiring my little games collection here one day, and I thought it'd be a fun little time to kind of show off the little items that I've collected over the years to make all of you jealous. I've always had a big fascination with looking at other people's physical game libraries, just intruding on them and just going through all the games that they have, judging them. And so I thought I'd finally step up to the plate and uh, see what you guys have to say about my little collection. So let's just kind of get started here, uh, going from shelf to shelf to shelf to shelf, and um, just see where we end up. Oh, right, and as for the consoles that I happen to own, uh, here's a little list here. Do I own that? Uh, I, don't th I don't think I own that. Alright, let's get this little shindig started. You're not gonna believe what's in here. Okay. Pre- pre- uh, pre- preamble. So all this stuff is in rough alphabetical order. Um, although there are some series that may not be the subsequent entry in the next series, uh, just letting you know. Anyway, let's start with the PS1 collection. Uh, not too many items here. I do want to have more, uh, but we'll see what eBay has to say. First up, we got the original driver. It's, uh, I've mentioned it before. It's, uh, kind of the progenitor of the driving sandbox genre. I've played a little bit of it, uh, mainly past the tutorial. I think I've saved past that point, just so I don't have to do that shit again, because that, that was... Oh! And, um, yeah, it's a... I guess you could call it a classic title, but I'm not too sure how well it's actually held up to this day. And, of course, we have Driver 2. It's, uh... I get a little bit better, because you can actually move around the world. Um, but it's different... It's definitely interesting... Uh, that there are two discs in here. Um, it makes me wonder how much content there is. Hold up. The first disc appears to have been misplaced. This is another thing I really like about PS1 discs. They're all like black on the bottom, so you can barely tell if there are any scratches or anything. Uh, it's just a neat little aesthetic choice. Kind of makes all the other ones look really, really boring in comparison. Uh, probably want to put it back in its place before it gets crumbled. Next up, we have the PS1 version of Grand Theft Auto. I know it's not quite the definitive version, um, but I still thought it was worth adding to the collection. DMA design. I mean, if you've seen the channel before, of course, you know I, I know a lot about GTA. And, uh, yeah, it's an alright game. I don't think I'll be spending a whole lot of time in, in it. It hasn't aged particularly well. Uh, probably even worse than the original driver, especially the PS1 version, but what you gonna do? And of course we got GTA 2. Uh, sadly this one does not have the front cover, um, but it is marginally better, at least the, the PS1 version of this. Back is definitely a lot cleaner. See all these screenshots, just simple text, and you got the original version of Grand Theft Auto, just a big wall of text here. That'd just be very, very fucking boring. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Hot Shots Golf, and this is the original Hot Shots Golf by Camelot, who you'll likely know as the people behind the Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, and just majority of the Mario sports games, and this is essentially Mario Golf before Mario Golf was a thing. Like, looking up footage, it has all the exact same sound effects, most of the same mechanics, it's just a bunch of anime-esque, chibi PS1 models that are a little bit ago, but um, it still looks like a quirky little time. Uh, and <laughs> there's a quote. There's a quote on here from Dave Stevens in ESPN. The graphics are so vivid; it's like watching golf on TV. Okay, okay, Dave. Whatever you say. Metal Gear Solid, the original. Uh, it's very cracked case, uh, but playing a little bit of it still appears to work, and it's definitely nice to have the original version. I do want Twin Snakes at some point, but spoilers, I don't have it. 
because it's worth a bajillion dollars. But it is, uh, again, another classic. I'd go through it eventually when I go through all the Metal Gear Solid games, um, whenever that happens. If I can get the HD versions of the uh, 2, 3, and Snake Eater on the 360, that'd be nice. If you've seen the Childhood Games videos, then you'll definitely know about this one. Monsters, Inc. Screen Team, also known as Scare Island on the PC, the version that I played as a kid. I beat this whole thing in like five hours, 100 percent of it, and like it's a very, again, very average platformer, 3D platformer, I should say, but it's not bad. Uh, it's definitely not particularly memorable, though. I mean, certainly better than the other Monsters, Inc. games out there, uh, or at least the PS2 one. Okay, Pac-Man World. Now this I uh, got at GalaxyCon, GalaxyCon, uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, it was the only one that I managed to get because not a whole lot of games there. Um, I did get something else, but I uh, sent that as a gift to a friend. Again, I've not played it, but I have played 2, uh, and 2 is a fun time, and I don't doubt that this is a lot of fun as well. Ah, the original Rayman. Now this was one of the first games that I got. Uh, for my PS1, and uh, actually got it before I had gotten the PS1, because uh, a funny little story about that, I got this and a few other games uh, with no intention of getting a PS1, and then later that day I went to uh, Half Price Books, and they just had a PS1 sitting there for 30 bucks, two controllers as well, except the memory card, which I managed to get on my elsewhere. The wonderful start of a great little collection. Not really. Not sure if there are any differences between this and other versions, uh, but I've heard it's a fun little platformer despite being monstrously difficult. Alright, let's just do all three of these back to back. Fire Uno. This was another one of the games that I got um, before I'd gotten the PS1, and this is my favorite Spyro. Uh, this is the one I played first, but I think it's just the simplest and most efficient game in the series. It doesn't overcomplicate anything, it's all about just collecting those gems. Definitely one of my favorite platformers I've played in the last few years. Then we got Spyro 2, which, uh, it's a very good game, but I thought the minigames throughout were just super, super annoying, and, um, kind of felt unnecessary and just kind of took away from the experience of collecting the coins. Coins. Collecting the gems, and, but I do like the little gold plating kind of gold cover that this has. I can't I can't tell if this was the... This is like a... I know it's not a reissue, or maybe it is. I don't know. Um, maybe all versions? I can't... I, I don't know if all versions have this, but it's definitely very nice to look at. And then we have three. Uh, You're the Dragon. And uh, I like it more than two, uh, but not as much as one. I think this had a better balance between uh, the mini games. I liked uh, controlling the other animal characters as well. They all had fun little quirks. Most of them, and um, yeah, really with all three of these games, you can't go wrong adding them to your little PS1 collection. Alright, none of y'all have ever heard of this. Fucking Swagman for the PS1. It was made by Core Design. Um, they were just shitting out a bunch of games um, in the mid-90s, just whatever would stick, and I had no idea what this thing was, uh, except for the just, it was called Swagman. How the fuck could I not get it? I mean, it's not really hard to describe, but I only played an hour of this thing, and I, I just, I just could not get into it. Just look up footage for it. It is, it's a weird, weird game. But uh, I got again, I got to the first boss, and I just, I just did not have the patience for it. Uh, Siphon filter, hell yes. I feel like this is one of those classic PS1 series, but like, I guess not a terrible amount of people remember it or think of it fondly, but I, I could be completely wrong here. This is, a, this is a cool little game. I hope to go through the whole thing one day, and as well as the other sequels. Yeah, I can't really see anything wrong with it. Um, might be dated, but a lot of these games are dated. Alright, to end off the PS1 collection, we have two copies of Need for Speed. Back in 2019, I uh, went to too many games. It's my third time going. And I just kind of got whatever the hell I wanted. This is after I got my PS1, so of course I got a bunch of like, little games. And I'm a Need for Speed fan. I, I like a lot of Need for Speed games, so of course I, was, I had to get the originals to see how much stacked up. Um, from what I've played, not very well, but thing is, I had gotten 
two copies because one of them uh, was only the box and didn't have the actual game. So I realized that in the next day, the next day I actually got the copy, and I believe it's this one here. Because, yep. Oh, God. Big old bulky PS1. It is... Oh, God. I've, I don't, I've not opened this in a while. This... Look at this manual. It's, it just feels so scratchy and... Ugh. Yeah, I feel like there are a couple of, a couple of cultures growing on here. So that is it with the PS1 collection. Now let's just move on to the few Dreamcast games that I have. Because I do have a little Dreamcast right here. Not sure if the camera can see it. No, it can, it can. I only have three games because Dreamcast games are a bit pricey and a little scant. I've yet to get around to just buying them on bulk. But whenever it's safe to go outside again, uh, then I'm going to start racking those up. As many as I possibly can. So let's just go through the two that I have here. First off, we got a uh, crazy taxi. Sadly, uh, this version does not work uh, very, very, very well at all. I tried cleaning the hell out of it. Once you get past like the first 30 seconds in the arcade mode, the environment just stops loading past a certain point and you get an error message. Sadly, it uh, uh, just kind of stops there. So yeah, that's a shame, but hey, I at least, at least have it. If I get another copy that actually works one day. Another one I have here is Sonic Shuffle. Uh, this came with the Dreamcast that I bought off a friend. Um, I've not played it. I've not heard very good things about it. Keep the party going with Sonic Comics. Oh, jeez. Oh, you know, the cover the is like ripped off. I'm, I, don't if they, I don't imagine anything was here. They didn't go... didn't didn't go for the the Sonic comics. Uh, offer expires April thirtieth, two thousand one. I think we can still get it. Yeah, these are the only fucking hell. Get back in here. Sadly, these are the only two Dreamcast games that I have in their official box. Uh, this one, however, the other Need for Speed game that just has the empty box is currently housing. Rayman 2 for the Dreamcast, uh, because this came inside the uh, Dreamcast itself. My dumb idiot friend forgot to take it out. I can get to the sequel whenever I get done with the first Rayman. Or hell, I could just play Rayman Revolution. I don't even have a PS2, why would I do that? Before we get to the DS here, just the two NES games that I have. I don't have an NES as the uh, console portion uh, ex explained, but you never know, one of these days I might get one of those uh, third-party HD multi-use uh, consoles. I can play NES games, Genesis games, Super Nintendo games, and brilliant HD. Uh, and I'll have these two to play. NES Play Action Football. I believe this was Nintendo published. The, one of the four first or only four-player games on the system. I not really looked into it at all, but I think it would be a rip roaring time to get some friends and play four player football on a 30 plus year old console. And the other game that I have here is uh, Gogo 13. Uh, this is based off in manga, anime franchise. Um, and it's one of the, I guess you could say one of the more mature NES games, uh, but this is back during the day when Nintendo of America was very heavy on the censorship, uh, but there were a couple sequences, a couple of things in here that kind of slipped through the cracks, and um, I just thought it was a bit of an interesting novelty uh, regarding that. I, the game itself is, I've heard it's fine, but it's kind of the novelty of owning this uh, interesting piece of uh, gaming history. All right, now we can start the extensive, or slightly more extensive Nintendo DS collection. Uh, fair warning. Some of these are not mine, technically. They belong to um, my sibling. I've played some of the stuff, though, so may as well just go around here and see what we got. This is one of the annoying things about having things in alphabetical order, because like I said, sometimes a uh, series has uh, games that are not sequential in their titles. So they don't look that great on a shelf. It just looks awkwardly placed. Uh, case in point, Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles, 
Miles Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth. This was the spin-off for the Miles Edgeworth character in the Phoenix Wright series. Um, it's actually quite a bit different from how Phoenix Wright normally plays. It's uh, Phoenix Wright normally plays as like a static adventure visual novel. Uh, this one is mostly still that, but you can actually move around uh, places and it doesn't really add a whole lot, um, but I think this is easily one of the best games in the series. Uh, the story and characters, I just love the cohesion that's woven throughout. There's also a mechanic in here where you take uh, two facts, as they call it, and kind of combine them, like the cards in Trauma Team. And um, yeah, I, I just think it's a solid, solid entry in the series. Again, one of my favorites. This is Dragon Quest IV. Um, I believe I got this at uh, the first TMG that I went to. This is the first Dragon Quest game that I played. And I thought it was a grand old time. I can definitely see why they recommend you go through this one first. And I also have Dragon Quest V, uh, which sadly I do not have the box for, but um, this has been here for quite a while now, and I just have not gotten around to it. Uh, but I know this is one of the more fondly remembered uh, entries in the series, um, and I'll... One of these days, man, one of these days. Okay, oh, nice. Uh, we got Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Um, this is one of the first games that I bought uh, at GameStop during my youth. This is after I'd gotten into uh, Ace Attorney, um, kind of. And I just, just bought it the month that it came out, played through it, and uh, it's great. Fucking great. Easily one of the best looking games on the Nintendo DS, and uh, the adventure game elements, and the whole Rube Goldberg puzzles that are involved are just ingenious. And the story's really good, characters are a lot of fun, music is great. <coughs> I need water. Help me, I need water. Yeah, highly recommended. I hope they re release it somehow. Um, I pretty sure you can get it on mobile devices. I hope it gets on Switch. Uh, give me the excuse to play it again. Then we got another uh, visual novel adventure game kind of thing. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of those in this video. And um, that is Hotel Dusk, Room 215. It is a very, very interesting game. It's one of those Nintendo DS games where you hold it on its side, kind of like a book, and then the right, uh, so the touch screen's on the right side and the top screen's on the left side. And um, it is just like a very, very cool, very smooth, very relaxed detective game. I do like the story a lot. When I originally went through it, I did think the ending was a bit underwhelming. But I think the central mystery behind it was very well told. And it's just kind of nuts how the whole story just kind of all takes place in this one hotel with a bunch of tenants who just so happen to have some connection to the big mystery of the game um and uh, or even have just stuff going on in their own lives it's a really really neat game um there was a sequel that was only released in europe and japan um i one of these days I'll get around to that too. Can't say I wouldn't mind getting this on Switch as well. And there was also um, the creators did a, a, a spin-off, but kind of like a spiritual successor. Uh, it was a while back. I think it was like Case Cold Investigations or something like that. Um, there was only one episode of it released. It was two hours. It was okay, but nothing else came out of it, so yeah, that, that sucks. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, the art style, fucking amazing. Goddamn gorgeous, those rotoscoped animations. <laughs> uh, it's like the fucking Take On Me video, if it had its own little world. Next up, uh, Kingdom Hearts 358 by 2 days. I... this was one of the siblings games. I've never gotten into this one. It's the only Kingdom Hearts game I've actually played, and, uh, again, I, I didn't really care for it. It just wasn't clicking with me, um, and it was kind of the point where I think, uh, I'm not really ever gonna get into Kingdom Hearts. I'm sure it is a grand old time, but 
I just... Not for a while. Not for a while. Uh, then we got Legend of Zelda, Phantom Hourglass. Um, I believe I got this at uh, GameStop as well. I think it's a good Zelda game. Uh, Touchscreen mechanics can get kind of annoying, and I know the repeating dungeon uh, aspect and the timer as well, but I think a lot of the boss fights are really fun. Um, and just the story, the story's uh, pretty interesting as well. I like Lane back. He's a bit of a Bit of a bit of a coward, but uh, he's a fun little coward. I have yet to play Spirit Tracks, but um, we got the legendary Starfy here. Uh, now this has been a series that I don't think ever made it to America until this entry, and it had been around for a while. Uh, it's by Nintendo, and um, it's a very cutesy Kirby-esque platformer. Uh, that I had a fair amount of fun with uh, when I played through it a long, long time ago. Uh, didn't really stick too much in the head for me, but I think it is uh, definitely worth your time if you ever kind of get around to it. I uh, can't imagine how much it costs. Uh, I don't think it really sold that well. Ugh. All right, um, so this is Life Science Surgical Unit. I got this uh, for the Trauma Team video, just to kind of play through a little bit of it. Because uh, this is the only other Trauma Team-esque game out there that um, I could think of. Uh, or And uh, it is it's bad. Or should I say, it is a decent game with a horrible localization. Like, Dreamcatcher. Like, I, I looked this up, they're like a Canadian publisher. Uh, they were given this game to translate and localize and spruce it up, but they didn't do that. They made just one of the blandest, most perfunctory, and just awkwardly written localizations that I've ever seen in one of these kinds of games. like Or just any Japanese game in general that's been localized in, in the U.S. Like, even like some of the worst localizations out there. They don't even compare to this. And even then, the game itself is not very interesting. Like, the procedures are not that enthralling. I don't like a lot, any of the characters. There are these mini-games that are put in throughout uh, that are just not particularly interesting in any way whatsoever. Um, yeah, this is definitely not worth your time, yet this is a brand new copy that I got off of Amazon that had been, like, sitting on the seller's shelf or their storage for however long. Um, and I can't, I can't imagine why this didn't sell well. Also, this was made by Spike, um, who, before their merger with Chunsoft, um, were not particularly great at games, as far as I can tell. And this is another one of the uh, siblings games, Looney Tunes Duck Amuck. Uh, it's by WayForward, and um, it's almost kind of admirable to make a game based off a singular, like, 10-minute cartoon. And... Uh, yeah, you can definitely tell uh, this is the case. It's like a variety game. You make Daffy Duck as miserable as possible before he takes away the stylus and punches you in the face. I admire their effort, but, uh... <sighs> License games, man. I'm just happy those have just gone down the toilet. This is one of my biggest surprises as a youth. Mario and Luigi's Bowser's Inside Story. I saw the commercials for this. I was thinking, oh boy, a brand new Mario platformer for my brand new brand spanking Nintendo DS. Uh, and I was fooled because it was an RPG. Um, at the time, I didn't really care for RPGs besides Pokemon. I fucking loved Pokemon. And uh, this one, I didn't think would be any good. And surprise, surprise, this kind of turned me on to RPGs in a way, and, um, like, more RPGs, I should say, and not just the simplest, uh, shit you get in Pokemon. Uh, it was a grand old time. I really love the story, re really like the fun little RPG combat. Uh, Mega Bowser is really cool. I think they did a great job mixing those concepts together and just making, having a lot of fun worlds and, uh, level design ideas. Especially within Bowser's body, man, like, I gotta replay this game again at some point. Um, not the, uh, remake, though, the very tepid remake. Uh, this is Metroid Prime Hunters. It's, uh, spin-off or side entry in the Metroid Prime series. 
uh, first person shooter on the Nintendo DS. And uh, just, just right away, you can probably imagine it's not a very good game. And it isn't. I thought the controls were incredibly clunky, and the Metroid aspects were very softened and just almost non-existent, and I just got very confused, and I did not care to go any further. So, yeah. No, thank you. Oh, uh, this is a... <sighs> this one's a bit of a personal favorite of mine and my sibling. Um... It's called Monster Tail. Uh, it is a Metroidvania uh, action platformer pet simulator where you play as this girl in Dreamland or wherever it is and she has a little pet that uh, you can interact with on the touch screen and it helps out during combat or during uh, getting past certain obstacles and such and it is a lot of really good concepts, and the execution is mostly good. Maybe a little bit too linear for Metroidvania, and uh, just I thought the pet, you should, pet sim elements um, there are there are like a lot of forms with this guy. This is by Dream Rift, and like this is their first attempt, and it was okay. This is their first attempt, and like a really really good job at their first attempt. Uh, and I think they would go on to make that Epic Mickey 3DS game as well. And then nothing else? I'm not even sure if they're still around. I kind of want to check that because I've been meaning to. They've only made those two games that I mentioned. Um, and uh, their website is gone, but there has been no news that they've shut down. So I guess for the past bajillion years, they've been making um, just... Uh, their next big hit, uh, New Super Mario Bros. This was one of the first games that uh, we got for our 3DSs, and I 100%ed this a little bit ago, and it was fun. Uh, it's definitely the most unique of the New Super Mario Bros. games. I thought the power-ups were mostly interesting. Um, I really hated how the mini mushroom was required for certain levels, and there was no easy way to acquire it, except within the levels themselves. Uh, so that kind of made 100 percenting it a bit obnoxious, but it was still a very, very, very well-made platformer. Alrighty. Now we got uh, more of the visual novel shit. Uh, nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. It's one of the most awkward titles of all time uh, but this is also one of my favorite games of all time it is just a complete batshit adventure uh, where nine people are stuck on a sinking ship they have nine hours to escape and they have to find the number nine door <sighs> just the more I think about this game just the more I realize just how stupid it is but you know what I'm not even gonna say anything else you can get this or you can get um the Zero Escape the Nonary games on consoles or wherever. If you're into visual novels and have not played this, I highly recommend it. It is a hell of a time. All right, and continuing on with that, we got the original Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Uh, now, I had gotten into this series around the time my Ghost Trick came around, uh, but I had actually not played the first game until like eons later. I watched a playthrough of it, though. Um, spoiling myself on the whole thing, but eh, it's whatever. It was stupid. It has definitely shown its age, because um, you know, the series was originally a Game Boy Advance series, and then they just ported this to the DS with a couple of modifications. And, uh, localizing the English, of course. And, um, yeah, even then, it's a very fun very fun adventure game with a lot of great characters really cool story um and hell i i like that fifth episode uh rise from the ashes as well it is really cool i really like how one of the one of the uh features here is the first person perspective they really didn't know how to market this shit back in the day did they and then we got justice for all um now, I don't think there are any bad games in the Ace Attorney series. There are bad cases, but there are any bad games. Now, sadly, this has only four cases, 
Some of them are better than others. Uh, but as a result, I think this is the weakest one in the series. But uh, this easily has one of, if not the best cases in the entire series. That last one uh, is just complete doozy. And even to this day, it just fucking arrests me and grips me harder than a lot of stories that I've replayed uh, in games. Um, so yeah, uh, this is also the first one that I played officially on my stupid DS after I played Ghost Trick. And, um, yeah, it's really, 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 really good. Even if it's, like, my least favorite in the series, it's still a really, really damn good game. And then we got Trials and Tribulations. Um, this is easily one of my favorites in the series as well. Uh, again, just great cohesive story, excellent characters, great writing. A lot of people's favorites. It's not hard to see why. And then they made a bunch of other ones that were not quite as good, according to some. I like the, <laughs> I like a lot of them more, actually. Uh, do I have... You know, I could have sworn I do have Apollo Justice somewhere. I do have it in its original cover. I have the game. I think I let someone borrow it, though. I can't remember if it was the sibling or someone else. But I do have that as well. Um, I'm not sure why uh, I haven't noticed after all this time. But anyway, uh, Apollo Justice, I like about as much as Trials and Tribulations. Screw all of you. It's good. Uh, then we got Plants vs. Zombies, the DS game, which doesn't have great, as good animation, but is a very competent port. Um, came with a fun little cover. Yeah, this is a better cover. I like this more. Uh, it's a fun strategy game. Very simple. Very silly. I'd recommend getting it on PC, though, if uh, you're able to. Uh, then we got Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers. Of time. This was also one of the first DS games I've gotten, and it was my introduction to the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series. I got through almost all the way to the end, but I just quit, and I've not picked it up since. And I remember having a very good time with it, but I don't want to go back to it any at any point in the future. Uh, these kind of dungeon crawler. Uh, especially sh ones that are shallow as this, I uh, just don't particularly care for at all. Uh, and then we got Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, because of course you gotta have it. And uh, I was a Pearl boy, at least I was until I lost my copy of Pearl eons ago. I don't wonder if there's anything in here. Uh, now this houses my copy of Platinum. Uh, which I got, but I do not have the cover for because this thing here was the cover for it. Thank you, GameStop. And, um, yeah, so Pearl was fun. I think Platinum's a much better version of it, obviously. But, um, I can't wait for those remakes, even if they don't look that great. Because that this, this was my first generation. Uh, but what is actually in here... Oh is, I don't know if you can see it, Pokemon Heart Gold. I got this off a friend about a year or so ago. I've not played it yet. I did think about it uh, a couple days ago, but I'm in the middle of several other long form games at this point in time, and I don't want to overwhelm myself. But back to more Pokemon. We've got uh, Pokemon Black Pokemon Black and White. Um, now these are also the we also got these new. I had black, um, and God, I put some serious time into this thing. I'm like over 300 hours or something. And jeez, uh, I really, really like Gen 5 a whole lot. I think it's probably one of, again one of the best stories in the game or in the series. And it was just really cool discovering all these new Pokemon and all the secrets about them, and realizing just how much they were copying from previous Pokemon. Uh, despite being new, but take what you can get. Uh, Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Now, this is the only Layton game that I have that is in its original cover, and I have not played this in eons, but great little puzzle game, kind of visual novel adventure game kind of thing. Uh, definitely feels like the first entry, because uh, it just takes place in one village, and it's just very, very simple. And, um, 
the story definitely has a lot of dumb moments, uh, but I find them rather endearing. Rhythm Heaven, Heaven, R Rhythm Heaven. Uh, I've not played a whole lot of this uh, because I hate music. I, I hate everything that is music. I think this was a great, 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 great concept. Uh, and definitely a lot of fun. A little shoddy in its execution, like some of the touchscreen mechanics were just kind of iffy here and there, and um, it just kind of took a while to really, really get into it, though. I thought, it, But it's still a pretty good game, just these kind of rhythm games are not exactly my thing. Scribble Knots. Uh, everyone's gotta have Scribble Knots. Um, you write anything down, it becomes an object, and uh, then that object will just fly across the screen because the physics are out of control. It's a fun little kind of mobile game-esque a uh, bit bite-sized level filled platformer and um, I don't really have anything great to say about it, nothing really terrible to say anything about it except for those physics, but um, yeah, it's fun. Alright, now this one I, I've not played because this also belongs to the siblings. The Sims 2 Castaway and it's The Sims 2 Castaway for the DS. I'm not gonna go any further than that. We got another one the sibling played, Spore Creatures, the uh, DS version of that Spore game that was so overhyped and so imaginative and it turned out to just be kind of eh. Uh, this one from what I saw was also kind of eh. You could just, you can make your own creature and then you uh, go around the world and fight a bunch of other weird looking monsters and it's uh, just kind of, kind of looked boring. Then we got uh, WarioWare Do It Yourself, or as the French says, Eveux de Joie. I thought this was a lot of fun. This was the first and only WarioWare game I've ever played. Um, and I know the focus was on like making your own mini games, but this was the first thing I used to actually make my own music, or something that wasn't like loops and stuff. And. <laughs> I mean, it's an, not a very extensive tool that they included on here, but uh, I made some pretty good jams on this thing. Whenever I get around to just excising this stuff off the cartridge, um, I'm going to... I'll just really upload them to the SoundCloud account that no one cares about, and just, uh, just to have my own... Just kind of listen to my own... Man, I should really get back to this, just kind of listen to what I made. And that is it for the DS games. Now let us bring down the rather few uh, 3DS games that are here. Okay, uh, this first one in the very poorly done God, GameStop cover is uh, Bravely Default. Um, this is another one of the siblings games. I have not played this. I have played Four Heroes of Light, but I have some interest, of, of course, in that case, um, but just don't actually have it. I've never got around to actually getting it as well. Then we got Fire Emblem, the, the Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, which, again, siblings game. However, I did buy a copy that didn't come with the case off of a friend about a year ago, so now I just use this cover to store my copy. And, uh, I've not played it yet. I... I'm sure it's, uh, this is the Fire Emblem game that got everyone to Fire Emblem. Uh, but, and maybe it will get me into Emblem as well. That is if I don't play Three Houses first. Uh, then we got Hey Pikmin. Uh, not a huge Pikmin fan, but I do have most of the games. Uh, God, I'd say that. I'm not a big Pikmin fan. I have most of the games, though. This is, like, the holdover for Pikmin 4, I guess, or I guess it is Pikmin 4. Who fucking knows? Who fucking cares? Um, definitely not quite looking forward to this whenever I get around to it. I'm sure it'll be a very halfway decent platformer, um, but zero expectations otherwise. Now this here is a rather interesting one. This is a Jake Hunter detective story, Ghost of the Dusk. And this is another visual novel. Uh, this is part of the Jake Hunter series, which I believe this is the third or fourth localized entry in the series. There were two others 
that were localized on the DS, like, back in 08. I know I've not played those games, but I have played this. This came out around the time that everyone uh, had just kind of abandoned the 3DS, and, like, the Switch had been out for over a year at that point. And, um, I think it is a fine visual novel. It has one big mystery and then a bunch of, like, little mini-mysteries... Uh, in the collection here, and I think they're decently told. Character is kind of interesting. It's very gritty. It's a lot. Uh, um, it's a lot grittier than the other visual novels that we've seen so far. Less anime, I guess you could call it that. Um, which kind of gives it a bit less personality. But uh, I mean, this guy smokes a cigarette, and you can make him smoke a cigarette at any time. That's that's pretty cool. Again, if you're interested in visual novels, if you ever find a copy of this, it's, uh, it's a bit of another hidden gem. I would like to see them get around to localizing more of the Jake Hunter series. Kinetic Curse Uprising. I've not played this, of course. I know how horrible the control scheme is, but people still manage to have a lot of fun with it anyway. One of these days, I'll get around to it. Maybe find a copy of my own that actually does have the game inside. Oh, then we got the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. I had played the original on my Wii eons ago and got as far as the Forest Temple before I quit, but with this I managed to get through the whole thing and it is definitely Ocarina of Time. Or a better, a better version of Ocarina of Time, I should say, because it actually looks decent. Um... It's one of those games that I recognize it is one of the most important games of all time, but these days it just does not hold up to other entries in Zelda, in my opinion. I think a lot of the dungeons aren't that well designed, and I certainly appreciate how simple it is, even with the time travel mechanic, but I don't know, something about this just kind of didn't really click with me. And then we got uh, Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds. This is another Zelda game on the 3DS that I just could not quite get into. I played 30 minutes of it once, set it down, and didn't touch it again for like three or four years. And then I only got as far as, I guess, the halfway point. Um, I really need to retry this, though, because I think I was not keen on it because, oh, uh, you don't actually keep the items that you get or need to use. For these dungeons oh that's lame but now breath of the wild is one of my favorite games of all time so yeah i'm definitely gonna need to give this one another shot mario kart 7 was this the one i played let's find out oh shit it's mario kart 7 yeah it's mario kart 7 what else am i gonna say mario kart 7 now this is an interesting one because it looks like just the normal retail copy of metroid samus returns at first however if we it up and then take off the back cover and flip it over it turns out this is the one that belonged to the collector's edition and it was just again sitting at a GameStop I guess whoever sold it was none the wiser I I have to wonder how much this is actually worth just because it has this cover on the back um, which again only part of the collector's edition along with the amiibo that came with it and whatever else uh, but yeah I really really like this one um, I wasn't too big on t 2D Metroid. Uh, I love 3D Metroid, obviously, because Prime is my favorite game of all time. Um, but 2D, I just a little eh about, but I played uh, a bunch of them in the past few years, and this is definitely up there as uh, one of my favorites. Um, a great remake of the second game, uh, which I should play the original of, and AM2R at some point, but... Yeah, definitely really, really good. Oh, uh, this is another one of the siblings' games. Uh, we'll get the other one. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and Monster Hunter Generations. Uh, I'm not a big Monster Hunter fan. I put some serious hours into World because it was the easiest one to get into. Um, the combat wasn't nearly as clunky. I do remember playing the demo for 3. I played the demo for the 3 version on 3DS. The 3DS version of 3 Ultimate. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, And we got New Super Mario Bros. 2. Yeah. This one is... So bland. This is, like, 
easily the worst one. Just like everything in it was just so. Eh. A lot of coins, but nothing else. And then we got Generation 6 Pokemon X and Y. Uh, again, I put some serious hours in this thing. This was the entry that got me into breeding. Uh, because, it was again, it was the simplest way to do so with uh, Super Training. That's what it was called, Super Training. Uh, I made some Pokemon through that that uh, I thought was going to be super cool. And then I go into battle with them and I get my ass whooped. Because I'm not thinking like a, a competitive player should be. And that just kind of killed my interest in doing that. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I think I, I was a Y boy. I was a good old Y boy. Uh, yeah, I think it's definitely... I don't know if I'd say it was one of my favorite Pokemon games. Because I could not give less of a shit about any of the characters in there. But um, I still think it was a lot of fun. Uh, regardless, because it's Pokemon. Even the worst Pokemon games, mainline Pokemon games are fun in some way. All right, Pokemon Omega Ruby. I did not get too far into this. I only got like to the fourth gym and then just put it down forever. <laughs> I should really get back to it though um, because I did have a decent little time with it and it's just like a remake of the Ruby and Sapphire Generation 3 but with uh, X and Y graphics. And um, they even have, they just copied over all the elements from X and Y for uh, carrying with carrying the Pokemon. It was... it was alright. And then we got Pokemon Sun. And, uh, uh... This is another one I didn't really get that much into. I think I got 20 hours in. I can't remember how long. But yeah, I, it's, it was alright. It was cool. I appreciate what it was trying to do. Some of the mechanics didn't pan out as well. But some of the changes were really good. And, um... Yeah, I... Should try to get back into this one of these days. Resident Evil Revelations. I did play this on the 3DS. Um, we, will, we will be seeing this again. But I did play this. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's a very impressive 3DS game. Uh, very good Resident Evil game too. Definitely not 4. Uh, but better than 5. And we got Steel Diver. One of the uh, first ever 3DS games. Launch title I believe. I've not played this, but I have just a, just a weird little fascination with it, because it's just such a, such a... It's just a weird, weird uh, launch title. Um, God, I don't even think it's going to be that good whenever I get around to it, but the more I look at these, just, the more I realize just how beat up a lot of these covers are. Like, nah, I didn't drop it in dirt. Grow up. This is a sequel to 999, uh, Virtue's Last Reward. And this is one of my favorite games of all time, like 999, but I like this a little bit more than that. I think just the twists in here are even more batshit than whatever the hell happened in the first game. And it's like, goddamn, dude, just, you can't really go wrong. Um, like, I think I played through this game like three, four times, and... Outside of Phoenix Wright, I rarely do that with visual novels. Like, I gotta wait a while in order to do that. And I replayed this, like, six months after I'd beaten it. Like, it was just that good. And then we got uh, Zero Time Dilemmas. The last game in the series, I have played through this only once. I've not touched it since it originally came out. I enjoyed my time with it. The more I think about it, though, it is definitely kind of a limp note for the series to go out on. But one of these days, uh, I'm waiting for some friends to go through the game, this games themselves so I can give myself the excuse to replay it and just see how well it's held up. Because it definitely has the series' worst moments, also has some of its best moments. So this one here, uh, this is a, a 3DS card case uh, with 18... Uh, spots to hold uh, cartridges. Both DS and 3DS games, though. Not just 3DS. And there's a fair amount of stuff in here. Because I bought this alongside uh, a new 3DS uh, from some guy on the internet. And um, it just kind of came with all of these games. And some of them I've not touched. Uh, so I probably never will touch, but I've used it to house a lot of the DS games that I don't have covers for go through it with 
images here on the top. Fuck you, son. All right, so over here on the left-hand side, we got Super Mario 3D Land, Super Mario 64 DS, Michael Jackson The Experience. This is the Elite Beat Agents ripoff. Uh, WarioWare Gold. It's the last uh, WarioWare 3DS game. Or the only WarioWare 3DS game. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations again. Not my copy. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater 3D. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Monster Hunter Generations, not my copy. Mario Kart 7, not my copy. And then Sonic Generations for the 3DS, uh, which is definitely nice to have. So now I don't have to... I keep forgetting I, I keep forgetting to have it, though. Anyway, over on the other side, these are the games that I've actually bought and are mine. Um, this is Paper Mario Sticker Star, which I played, like, two, three hours of, uh, of and I've never touched it since. Uh, Sonic Chronicles, which I played... A little bit more of, sadly, and uh, then just quit because it was terrible. Then, Four Heroes of Light, which, again, this this is one of the only Final Fantasy games I've actually played. I got to the final boss, and I just couldn't do it. Just could not do it. And then we got Moon, which is a weird, 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 weird game. Another one of those first-person shooters. But it's like a sci-fi... It's like a sci-fi first-person shooter, kind of aliens-ish game with just a bunch of alien robots. A uh, very technically impressive game for the 3DS. It runs 60 frames per second. I forget who was made it. Made it. Renegade Kid made it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely not held up that well. Uh, then we got the two Trauma Center games, Under the Knife 1 and 2. It's really solid, uh, both of them. And then we got the other two Professor Layton games I have, the Diabolical Box, which... It was pretty good. I thought the story was even dumber than the first one. Uh, but it had its, has its moments, and the puzzles are as good as always. And then Unwound Future, which definitely one of the... the probably the most interesting game in the series. It has some really fucking stupid moments. But that ending, man. Jesus Christ. And then we got Mario Golf World Tour, uh, because, again, I love Mario Golf. Um, it's definitely a very good entry from Camelot, who have been pretty, pretty lax with the sports games as of recent. And I think this is... On it, like, this and Aces are probably, like, the best ones that you can get from Camelot, uh, during the 2010s. Um, and this just, it's just a lot of fun, and I cannot wait for the new one coming out this summer. Uh, at least I just, I hope to God it's gonna be good. God, I hope it's good. Alright, uh, what do we got next? Now uh, we got the, uh, 10 or 11 PS4 games that I bought in anticipation for getting the... These are the 11 PS4 games I've gotten in anticipation for the um, PS5, uh, well before I'd actually gotten the PS5, and now I've gone through three of them in like the, the past two months. So I can't really comment on a whole lot of these, but I can definitely say why I was interested in getting them. First one. This is going to be a big shocker. Everybody's Golf. Now, this isn't by Camelot, but this is still um, Hot Shots Golf, uh, the, or the latest version of it. And so, of course, I'm going to fucking get it. Probably play this before the new Mario Golf comes out. And then we got uh, Fist of the North Star. Lost Paradise. Uh, this is the um, Fist of the North Star game made by the Yakuza folks. So it just pretty much plays out like a Yakuza game, and it's a match made in heaven. Uh, as far as I can tell. Um, this is not the original box art, but this is on the reversible cover that I believe comes with every copy, but I could be wrong. Maybe I just got lucky. But yeah, I watched uh, Fist of the North Star like a while ago. Like I got into 70-something episodes, which, I mean, that's pretty much about as far as you, I really need to get because it's just a guy who punches people and then they explode. What else is there to say? And we got the Last of Us remastered featuring Ellie Last of Us and Joel Last of Us in the, one of the most acclaimed games of all time. Fuck you. This is the PS4 version, obviously, and um, I think it is a fine, fine game. Of the Naughty Dog games I've played during this generation, it's definitely my favorite, gameplay-wise at least. Because I was really into exploring the desolate world that's in here and crafting the materials that you gather in that world. 
I really like that gameplay loop. Uh, the story is fine. Left Behind, the DLC prequel in-between thing, is also fine. I can't say it's one of my favorite games of all time, but I had a generally good experience with it. And what else is there to... What else can I really say about it? Then we got Last of Us Part Two. I have heard good things about it. I've heard bad things about it. I've not been spoiled on all of it. I know some of the things that happen, but it, of course I don't get the context, so it just doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, I will get around to this at some point. Sooner rather than later, but we shall see how that turns out. I'm definitely looking forward to it, though. Uh, then we got Need for Speed Heat. Again, I love Need for Speed. Uh, and this was, I felt, the only version of Need for Speed on newer generation consoles that I felt was worth getting. Uh, not the reboot, not Payback. Um, this one, Heat. I, it looked like it was going to be the more arcadey version that I loved uh, from previous Need for Speed games. But who knows? It could be a complete piece of shit. And it could have been lied to. We shall see. Anyway, then we got Persona 5 Royal. I was almost uh, gonna get the original version just so I could play that, but I, I may as well just get Royal. Because, uh, again, it's just basically the same game, just a couple of additions, like what they did with Golden, and then whatever the enhanced version for 3 was. Again, I'll get around to this eventually. I don't want to play a, like another long-form RPG in the middle of other games that are also long-form. Shadow of the Colossus, the uh, PS4 version specifically, because this was originally on the PS2, and then there's an HD version on the PS3, and this was remade. Now, I've played the HD version on the PS3, and I really, 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 really enjoy it. I'm not sure if I'd say it's one of my favorite games of all time, but uh, perhaps replaying this at some point in the future, probably soon, because I, I said I was going to play this soon, uh, could change that. Then we got Marvel Spider-Man, the Game of the Year edition. This one contains all the uh, DLC. Yeah, I just, I just had to get this, of course. Um, and uh, I'm very interested in playing it at some point. And I really think it will be a fun little time. We got Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection. I think it is a fun little collection of games with all the, the first three Uncharted games. Like, you really can't go wrong with this. I think the first game has not aged particularly well. I found it quite boring. Second game, massive improvement. The third game is a little bloated and a bit... I just I just couldn't quite get into the story, but it had a lot of really fun action set pieces anyway, so... And we got Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Uh, I wrapped this one up recently, and I... Don't think it's as good as 2, because 2 is my favorite one. Uh, but it's definitely, like, right under that. I think it's a bit over long. I, again, don't particularly care for the story, but I think it's a lot better than any of the first three. I think it had a better mix of combat and exploration and the climbing and such. It's a lot of fun. And then we have the... Uh, the expansion sequel or whatever the fuck you want to call this uncharted the lost legacy which i have yet to play this is next up on the list uh, but i've heard good things about it it's, it's not particularly long and if you like uncharted 4 you're obviously gonna like this one so i most likely will like this one okay now with those done and a pile of games in the corner you'll be joining them Okay, uh, I've got myself a fair amount of Switch games here, um, even more online. First off, we got AI, the Somnium Files. This is the latest uh, game from the uh, Zero Escape creator, the 999 guy, Virtuous Less Award, Zero Time Dilemma. And um, this was my favorite game of 2019. <laughs> I, hadn't, I didn't play a whole lot of games in 2019, but... This is easily, like, my favorite. Uh, but this uh, was just a, another mind-boggling adventure visual novel detective game that was uh, maybe a little... a bit more grounded somehow than the other ones, but uh, still can, can just be as nutty as the Zero Escape games. Um, and the ending is one of my favorite endings in any game ever. 
and so I highly recommend it. Um, the Switch version does definitely suffer in comparison to the other versions, but I think it runs just fine. Like, there's no shame in getting this. Like, there, oh, like there is shame in getting the 3DS version of Zero Time Dilemma. I forgot to mention that. Things run, that thing runs like shit. Uh, speaking of running like shit, I was under the impression that this would be at least on par to the other versions of Bloodstained. And lo and behold, it wasn't. What a surprise. I will have to eat my own words at some point, though, and just get through this version. I know they improved most of it, um, but it's still not the definitive. Really, any other de version's the definitive, um, but... It's Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. It's one of the best Kickstarter games successes out there. Like, it at least turned out better than fucking Ukulele and uh, Mining Number 9. I will say that. Alright, then we got Burnout Paradise Remastered. And I gotta say, this is like a extremely well-optimized version of the game. Uh, like, it doesn't look quite as good as the other ones, but it's still Burnout Paradise Remastered, and I... Like, over the past year, I got into the Burnout series. Uh, well, maybe a little too late for that, uh, considering this is, like, the last good entry, and it's, like, way over ten years old now. But I had a fair amount of fun with it. I love the big open world, driving around. I much prefer the earlier games and just their stri more straightforward races, but it, it probably has the best crashes. Like, the damage visuals look really great. Whenever it goes down in price, I'd recommend getting it. Uh, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. Uh, I want to play more of this, but this is definitely a, a very... Just a fun, relaxing little, little game that came out last year. You know, everyone is not really fond of Nintendo this year, but when they still have games like this that come out, that's published by them... I honestly still think they're doing a hell of a better job than they were during the Wii U era. Don't at me. Oh, boy, oh. Then we got the two Cooking Mama games here. Like, if you've seen the 2020 Controversies video, you already know the joke behind that. Because uh, I got this from GameStop directly online, and they gave me two copies. I have no idea why they gave me two copies. I've opened one of them in anticipation of playing it at some point in the future. I have another on and a big copy, uh, just in case it rockets in value. Maybe I'll sell on eBay for a hundred bucks, who knows. And we got Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. This is the, um, uh, I, not, not a continuation of Breath of the Wild, but it is a Dynasty Warriors game in the Breath of the Wild universe. And I'm not a fan of Dynasty Warriors, uh, but I do love Breath of the Wild. So I just got this because of that association and yeah it's really really good uh, I a lot better than I was expecting it to be uh, definitely not anywhere as good as Breath of the Wild but it's not trying to be and it's I still managed to 100% it or just clear out all of the areas and it took fucking forever to do so and oh God, I was so happy when I did it so happy when I got all that praise and then they announced the DLC for it of course I'm gonna get it. I can never escape this world. Da 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 da. Katamari Damacy re-rolls specifically. I just had to get this when it came out. Like this is a fucking golden opportunity, and uh, I really hope other entries come out at some point. I do want to get the other games though, even the ones that were exclusive to their own consoles, like the DS version, the Xbox 360 version, the PS3 version. Um, hell, if they re-release We Love Katamari, then fuck it. Eh, speaking of Breath of the Wild, yeah, I had to get the Switch version of it. Um, I will say that I originally played it on Wii U, because I didn't have a Switch when, um, the game originally came out, but I eventually got the Switch version because I just wanted to play it on handheld at any time, and goddamn, again, right under Prime, Metroid Prime, this is my favorite game of all time. Feels like a Zelda game, and it doesn't feel like a Zelda game, and just goddamn, I just cannot get enough of this, and I cannot wait for the sequel. And we got Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. 
This is a cute little remake of uh, one of my favorite Zelda games. Probably my first, the first Zelda game I've ever played, actually, was Link's Awakening for the Game Boy. And, um, yeah, again, cute little remake. I do have some issues with it. I do have some issues with it. I do think at some points it doesn't run particularly well. Um, and uh, a little bit of the personality did get sucked away from it, despite the very, very adorable art style and really good presentation. However, I can't really get mad at this. Again, it's one of my favorite Zelda games, so of course I was going to fucking get it. Uh, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I've had this for eons and I've not even touched it. Who knows, maybe I'll get around to it someday. I know just the, the weird combination, everyone was a bit off-putted by it, but it turned out surprisingly decent. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind if they did something like this at some point in the future again. It's just a weird combination. Maybe have a fucking first-person Captain Falcon shooter. Mario Kart 8 Double Deluxe. One of those games where I play with my online buddies, and uh, I'm fucking horrible at it, and then I play with my real-life buddies, and I'm the fucking king at it. It's that fucking gray area. And it sucks to be in. Mario Tennis Aces. Uh, again, I said this is one of the good Camelot sports games that they put out during the 2010s. And I, I did say that because uh, it is it is definitely a very good game. But uh, it is a little short on content and I have not played this in quite a while. Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2. I've not touched this either. I will get around to it. However, uh, I did get this pre-owned, so unfortunately I only have the Mega Man X collection. Because Mega Man X2 was a download only. And um, uh, you had to get a... I think there was a card in here for that. And the only cards that were in here are advertisements for Mega Man 11 and Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2. So yeah, that thing is gonzo. And then we got um, My Hero One's Justice. It's a game, fighting game, based off the My Hero Academia series. Like I, I'm a huge fan of the series, so of course I had to get the first one, and it was not great. Um, but it ran halfway decently on Switch, so I can't really complain too much about it. Uh, it's funny, when I went to the GameStop to get it, uh, I apparently was the first and only person who had gotten it at that store that day when it originally came out. Because I think it came out the same day as Red Dead Redemption 2. So, uh, that was doing a fail. But hey, they got a second one out last year, so... Uh, that I guess apparently is a little bit better. But who... Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Uh, it's a remake of Gen 1. Uh, very simplified remake, but... I enjoyed it a lot. Um... And I think I wouldn't mind seeing other entries or other generations that are remade like this. I can't, I, I, I'm surprised there haven't been already. It's been out for a while now. And again, this thing's sold like gangbusters as most Pokemon games do. Anyway, uh, this is one of the uh, disappointments from last year. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon uh, Rescue Team DX. It's a remake of the um, Red and Blue Pokemon Dungeon games from back in the day. I got eight hours into it, I was having a lot of fun, then I got stuck somewhere and realized that the Pokemon that I had chosen was a bad, bad choice. Uh, and I would have to grind my ass off in the dungeon that I was in in order to get past that certain point I got stuck. So, um, yep, dropped it there, haven't picked it up since, so whatever. Cute looking game, but very bland otherwise. Speaking of bland, uh, Pokemon Sword. It's, it's fine. It could look better. Could look a lot better. Could play better. The story could be a lot better, too. Got, again, you want to talk about fucking stupid stories. Um, but, I don't know. Playing through it, I've again, I've always been a Pokemon fan, so of course I was going to fucking get this. And I just... I just... I can't stay mad at Pokemon. I really, really, really would like uh, for them to just put a bit more effort into the games, um, but if the remake of Diamond and Pearl is of any indication, uh, we kind of have a long way to go for that. But the 
other Sinnoh game that they're making. I forget what that one's called, but um, I'm definitely more interested in that one, so who knows. Uh, there's this one, Resident Evil Revelations Collection. This is the first and second Resident Evil Revelations game. So I, again, own Resident Evil Revelations for like a third time. And this also has uh, Reve uh, Revelations 2 which uh, was a very, very weirdly marketed and weirdly released. If Capcom released it originally as four weekly episodic parts, and I, I thought there was, like, no point to it, because this was during the time when Telltale was popular, and, like, a, a, not a bunch of them, but there were other studios trying that approach, and you never really tell this was one of those. I, I honestly like it a bit more than the first game. I think the chapter approach was actually a very good idea. Um, it did, like, uh, make the story a lot more interesting, because you play, like, two sides of the story and like during different times, so it's kind of interesting to see just how uh, both of them fit together. Um, even though it's not really that different from the first game, um, or even and a bit more action-oriented as well, less survival horror-ly. Horror <sighs> then we got River City Girls. This is the first limited run copy uh, game that I have. Um, fun little beat-em-up. I thought the story was fucking dumb, especially that goddamn ending. God. God. I shouldn't really get mad at an ending for a stupid beat-em-up game, but felt like it would probably be a lot more fun with uh, another player as well. But it's a very good-looking game. WayForward did an excellent job with it. Uh, I really do like the character designs, so I can't be too mad at it. I do want to play the game that these two girls were uh, featured in, though. That Super Nintendo uh, Kuyo-kun game um, that everyone really likes. And then we got Robotics Note Elite Dash Double Pack. So this is another visual novel, and originally watched the anime that this was based on, and really, really liked it. So, coincidentally, the game was coming out later that year. Uh, so I got it, and um, I had not played a straight-up visual novel up to this point. And when I say that, I mean a game without, like, hybrids from other genres, like adventure games or puzzle games or stuff like that. Because this is just all text, all characters, animations, very few choices throughout. And, um, yeah, so it took a little bit to adjust to it. Uh, the first game, though, I think was one of my favorites from last year. Uh, it's like an eight-year-old game at this point, but it was the first time it was released in America, so whatever, it counts. Second game, Dash, though, like, the more I think about it, just the more disappointed I am with it. Because uh, it's a sequel, follow-up sequel to the first game, but... God, like, it had... It was like... A, there was like a seven-year difference between both of these games, and there were some changes with the writers, um, they made, they just, like, uh, they got a lot more perverted, I, I don't know what happened, but I still enjoyed it overall, I can't really get too mad at it, um, so, yeah, uh, again, if you like visual novels, again, highly recommended, especially that first game. And then we have another limited run game, Shantae and the Seven Saurians. I have played the other Shantae games before this. Um, the first one on the Game Boy didn't get too far in. It was meh. Uh, Risky's Revenge was very average Metroidvania platformer kind of thing. Uh, cute characters, though. Uh, Pirate's Curse uh, actually surprised me. I really, really enjoyed that game. And it was one of those things that kind of just had to stir in my mind for a little bit for me to realize like how much I enjoyed it. Uh, but, but that was probably because uh, then I'm playing Half Genie Hero, um, which was not quite as good, uh, but still really, really fun, and again, looks great. I have not played this, but I do know it's not quite as revered as the other ones, so that will definitely be interesting whenever I do get around to it. Uh, then we got Splatoon 2. I put a fair amount of hours into this, but I could never really get into Splatoon 2's, or Splatoon's multiplayer. Um, I do like the world and the characters a lot, um, because it's just, it's just a lot of fun, these stupid squid kids. Uh, I actually thought the story was, the story mode was halfway decent. I've yet to play Octo Expansion, uh, but I'll get around to that at one point. As well, that's just the fucking tagline for this series. I'll get around to it at one point. 
Uh, my god. Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom Hydrated. Yet another Switch version that was not very well optimized. Uh, I played through it anyway, because at least it ran better than fucking Bloodstained. Um, and, uh, it was, it, was, it was an okay platformer. Little 3D collect-a-thon platformer. And I can't really say anything else about it, other than, uh, after I beat the game and planned on 100%ing it, it corrupted my save file, so I got sent back a few hours and uh, just kind of put it away. One more thing. Uh, this is the only Switch game where the SPINE title is not in all caps, and that is very fucking annoying. Uh, we've got another limited run game here, Streets of Rage 4. Uh, sadly, this cover is not quite as good as uh, the other covers have been. Um, but I recently played through it with a friend and had a lot of fun. Um, it was definitely very reminiscent of 2, which uh, I have played. It's one of the only beat em ups I had ever played, and it was a really, really good time. And this again reminded me a lot of that. Um, and I just can't really complain. It was very fair, challenging in some parts, but it um, just had a lot of great action and just. Very, very dumb fun, especially co-op. I feel like I would have had a similar experience with River City Girls if I just played that solo, so that's what I was waiting for. Okay, then we got uh, the game that's going to disappear from my shelf in a few days, assuming this video doesn't come out uh, before the end of the month in March, because that is when we are filming it. Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Uh, it's got Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy in beautiful HD. I know this isn't exactly a very graceful collection from Nintendo, however, I enjoyed the hell out of all of these games, even 64, which I don't really care for much in the first place. This is just a uh, grand old time revisiting some of my childhood memories with these games, um, especially Sunshine, which was one of the first GameCube games I had played, as you'll see later, and um, yeah, just uh, really enjoyable. This thing has sold like millions and millions of copies, and yet it's gonna just go away at some point. Um, but they may re-release them digitally, separately. Uh, who, know, who knows what the fuck they're gonna do with it. Okay, we got Mario Odyssey, which I actually replayed recently. Um, just kind of going through the game, because when I first played it, I tried to 100% it. Um, or at least get all the moons that you can within each map. And I got all the way up to the final, final, final level with the Grandmaster Star equivalent, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And it was really annoying, so I just kind of dropped it there. But up until that point, I got all that when I originally played it, and then replayed it recently. It's still a lot of fun. I had a really good time with uh, Odyssey. Um, I don't know, there's just something about collectathon platformers that, when really well done, I just. They just click with me a whole lot. Alright, then we got Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Duh. Uh, everyone is here. <laughs> and then a bunch of anime characters that no one cares about. Kidding! 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 Okay, now this one um, is a bit weird. This is Turok 1 and 2. Switch versions on the limited run version specifically. And um, really cool covers. Definitely. Uh, Truck 1, I did go through. I had a lot of fun with it. Truck 2, I just couldn't get into. I thought the uh, map was very confusing, and uh, the levels were like, a little overlong, and uh, I don't, didn't care for the objective-based um, uh, design for that stuff. I uh, just kept it simple and upped the... Uh, stupid guns and such with uh, the sequel that they had in uh, Turok. And then we got Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. I mean, what can be said about Xenoblade Chronicles? Uh, it's probably one of my favorite RPGs. Like, I really, really like it. I I guess I love it. I think uh, the, it's a very, very well-paced RPG. Uh, and it, I, it's just very easy to get distracted by all of the side stuff. Uh, so that you lose track of whatever. But, regardless, I think it is just a fine-ass RPG, and if you've not played it, this is obviously the best version to get, because the original version, the those models do not. And then, of course, we got Xenoblade 2, which, I mean, 
at this point in time. At this point in time, at this point in time is when, you know, the new Smash characters are out. I'm just gonna date this video immediately. I mean, I've already dated myself anyway. But I'm starting to get into it. Um, I have heard good things. A lot of my friends really like it. And a lot of my friends are not as fond of it. So I'm very interested to see which side I fall on. Probably somewhere in the middle. As I do with most of this shit. But yeah, anyway, that is it for the Switch collection. And that is it for, like, a lot of these games. But now we are going to move on to the GameCube games. But first, I gotta clean up this shelf. Oh, oh, I can't believe that actually worked. So much worthless junk here. Oh, look at that, GameCube games. Let's go through them. Okay, so this is my first console, so I've played a majority of them. Mostly in my youth. But some of these I haven't played, and some of them I can't play. Uh, specifically, Billy Hatcher and the Giant... Billy Hatch, Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. It took me forever to find a copy of this. It looks so, so nice, uh, so well preserved. At least better than the other ones. Um, I pop it inside the GameCube just to give it a little try. I can't even get past the pre-rendered intro before it crashes. Nothing even wrong with the disc itself. It looks clean. There are a couple tiny little scratches on it, but it looks clean. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks clean. <sighs> yeah, I can't fucking play it. Uh, very big disappointment. I can't even play it on the Wii. It just does the same thing. So, uh, total bust, but at least I have a copy, I guess. I can find a working one one day so I can actually play this and see what the fuck it is. Oh! Uh, <laughs> Alright. So... I can explain. So yeah, this is BMX Triple X. Uh, this is one of the last games made by Acclaim before they went gonzo. And um, it is just basically a BMX game where you can play as with topless females. I think this is the only version that actually allowed you to do that. The other ones didn't. PS2 and Xbox. I, I think it was also an Xbox. I know it was on PS2. Uh, but I, I just got this for the novelty. I think I played a little bit of it. It's Definitely a BMX game, and definitely has titties. Bust a nut laughing. Huh. The only save, the only saving grace here really it has a lap dance by Nerd in the soundtrack. It's an excellent song. So, it has that going for it, I guess. Oh hell yeah, Burnout uh, for the GameCube. I played this uh, last year, and uh, it is very, very simple. Uh, but it is uh, a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Very good first effort from Criterion Games, another acclaimed game as well. Um, this was also before they went busto. I don't have Burnout 2. I did see a copy during my uh, days of looking through used game stores before the apocalypse hit, but I uh, did not, not grab a copy. I'll need to remedy that eventually. Alright, uh, just going straight from B to F with Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Uh, no, uh, again, this is another one I've not played, uh, but it's definitely a very interesting looking game. Uh, <laughs> may end up playing this before any of the numbered entries in the series. It was interesting to see that they were doing the remake, or no, not the remake, the HD version, or whatever that thing was. Uh, for modern consoles, uh, so I was a little worried I was just getting this and it would be worthless, but uh, <laughs> as it turns out, the, getting the original was probably the best bet. It even has Game Boy Advance support. It's one of the only games that could support that, I guess. Fucking weird. Uh, ooh, another game I just got for the novelty, Hitman 2. Uh, this is the only version of the game on Nintendo consoles, technically. I know they released Hitman 3 on the Switch, the cloud version or whatever, but who cares? So yeah, uh, this is actually not the worst game in the series. I know a lot of people think it is, but I think the original takes that cake by a mile. Um, but this was uh, a close second, though. It plays a bit better, but it's also a bit more drawn out and a bit duller than the original. Um, especially on the GameCube, because I played the PC version of this. Uh, and I tried playing this, and it just is definitely a dumbed-down version um, that does not run as well. 
Uh, so once again, I just got it for the novelty. I, I don't think I'm actually going to play this thing. I, d I don't want to go through this whole fucking thing again. Especially that Russia level. Ah, this is one uh, from my childhood. The Incredibles. It's a halfway decent action beat-em-up um, game that uh, is definitely very, very much a licensed product, but I enjoyed it quite a lot in my youth. I never got through the whole thing, though. Uh, there's a certain point, uh, like halfway through, uh, where it just became stupid and dumb and impossible. Even when I replayed it a couple of years ago, uh, I just got to the point where I just I just couldn't care anymore. I just played the stuff I played as a kid, and that was it. I think it's a bit better because it's by Heavy Iron, who make they made more decent licensed games than what ASM um, and or Behavior Interactive were making. Those are the, the kings of that. Ah, here we go. Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess for the GameCube. I played through this version recently, and you can definitely tell it's pushing the GameCube to its limits. So it doesn't run terribly, but it's much more noticeably choppy in portions. Uh, but it's still Twilight Princess anyway, so of course um, I was going to enjoy it. And I really just played for the novelty of the flipped perspective. Because um, the Wii version, he swings the sword in the right hand, in this version it's the left hand. And, again, it's Twilight Princess. It's, like, one of my favorite Zelda games ever. Like, right below Breath of the Wild. Here's another classic, uh, a bit more well-remembered for the GameCube, of course. Uh, Wind Waker, the uh, Player's Choice Edition, uh, which I believe the original cover was just all yellow, and this is now gold. This was the first console Zelda game that I played. And for the longest time, I thought it was good, but I just never got through it. And just past a certain point, I just couldn't care anymore and then uh with another version i'll show off later i did eventually go through it all and yeah it's a lot of fun um not one of my favorites but i appreciate the amount of personality in this game that they just injected it with uh toon link and all the casts as well it's definitely one of the best casts in zelda games i would say probably not in my top five though well Maybe, maybe number five, I guess. Maybe number four, I'm not sure. And of course, we gotta, we gotta have Luigi's Mansion on here somewhere. God, man, this cover art has aged gracefully. And I'm, I'm not joking, it like actually looks really good. Uh, the game itself, definitely a launch title for the GameCube, but it still looks really good too. Um, I've never played through this whole game, even though I know it's really, really short. I don't know, I just, uh, the gameplay never quite grabbed me as much as it did others, but it has a lot of charm to it. I don't think I have the sequels, uh, nor am I really that interested in the sequels, but maybe down the line, we'll see. Men 2005. Uh, football's one of my favorite sports, so growing up, I should say, uh, and of course I had to get a football game in the GameCube, and this was just the version that I got uh, when I first got my GameCube. Yeah, it's definitely fun. Um, I never really went through the, uh, like a whole season with this uh i did with another version of madden that we'll see later um but yeah i think the box art's pretty cool at least God, like a, it's like sticker residue on here i gotta clean it off one day ah oh, nice now i'm gonna talk about sports games here's one of my favorites mario golf toadstool tour i mentioned before i had World tour on the gamecube uh and this is He's, again, one of my favorite sports games ever. This is one of the first games I'd gotten from my GameCube, and, like, at the time, I thought it was fun, but just over the years, I just came to adore just the fast-paced gameplay and the course design. Uh, it was, like, a mix of realistic and Mario-themed courses, which there are not a whole lot here, but they're all just so well-designed, and just, it's fucking addictive. It's going through. I really like the pace uh, of this game as well. I was going to make a video on this a couple of years ago, and I had so much footage recorded for it. Just kinda, I, I'm not even sure what it was going to be about, like, just the game in general, uh, or just something along those lines. I think I was trying to get the Ace difficulty unlocked on here, because it was very, <laughs> very difficult doing so. Um, you have to get like all the all the character stars and yeah, very annoying, but I just kind of fell by the wayside. Still love this game though, and I can't wait for the Switch version, which again I hope is hope is good. I, I hope to God that game's good. Uh, Mario Kart Double Dash. Now this was not my Mario Kart growing up, uh, but 
I realized some at some point I was going to have to get this and try to go through it someday. This, however, was one of the first games uh, that kind of convinced me that video games were the way to go. So it does hold a bit of a special place in my heart, although I've never, again, never really played it a whole lot during my lifetime. Um, but I know it's one of the more beloved Mario Kart games and one of the more chaotic ones. Uh, and, and unique, I should say. Because uh, I don't think they ever did something like this ever again. And it was very special for that, so... Yeah. And Mario Party 7. Now, this came with the GameCube that I got as a kid. Um, came packaged with it. From what I uh, have gleaned, this is also one of the better regarded Mario Party games. This is the last one on the GameCube, right before 8. And I, I had a lot of fun with this growing up. Um, this is also the version with the the 8 player uh, multiplayer, or 16, I'm not even sure. Uh, it was uh, innovative, I guess, uh, but it's Mario Party. It's always going to be fun. Um, really, any version, except for maybe the newer ones, are worth getting. Especially this one. I would definitely like to get the other GameCube ones, especially 6, because I do like... The one game I played of 6 was a lot of fun. Back at the Mario Sports angle, a Mario Power Tennis. It's another Camelot developed game, uh, and uh, I actually didn't play this uh, on the GameCube specifically. It was the Wii version that I that I had. I um, thought that was a whole new game, but anyway. Yeah, this is one is a lot of fun. It's funny, like, tennis is like the sport that I played in high school. Uh, but I never really cared a lot for tennis games. Like, this is one of those things that I like. It's a lot more fun playing it in real life than it is with video games, but it's like the golf is the exact opposite. I don't think I could stand like a single game of golf, except mini golf or disc golf or whatever. Yeah, anyway, uh, this is still a really fun tennis game. It's had a lot of fun courses, a lot of just fun antics. Mario antics. Can't really go wrong with it. Oh boy, Mario Superstar Baseball. <laughs> now, this game I was obsessed with getting as a kid. I never played it. Never got it. But I saw all the advertisements for it, and I was just... just I loved it. Baseball's, again, also one of my favorites. Uh, and then years later, down the line, I did get a copy. And, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of fun. A bit shallow. Uh, but I had a rip-boring time uh, going through it. I think I got all the way to Bowser in the story mode, but then just kind of dropped it there. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Surprisingly fun. Like, all the GameCube Mario sports games were, like, really fun, come to think of it. Oh, boy. Here it is. Metroid Prime. The GameCube version, though. Um, which I did play, uh, a while back. Uh, before then, I just haven't played the Wii version. And it was definitely interesting going back to the, just the standard control scheme, and not having it with pointer controls. I, I prefer it with pointer controls, but, I mean, it's... Still definitely playable with just a GameCube controller. But yeah, uh, even then, with the not as precise controls, it's still Metroid Prime, and it was still a lot of fun. Like, even a little bit di more difficult than the uh, Wii version, probably because of those controls, but... Oh, the lock-on was still accurate enough. It wasn't a nightmare. Uh, speaking of nightmares, <laughs> uh, Metroid Prime 2, the GameCube version. Uh, again, played the Wii version before this. And I knew this one was a bit more notorious uh, for being one of the harder Metroid games. Like, I know they dumbed down the difficulty for the Wii versions specifically, not even with the controls, just in general, because some of the bosses in here are pretty rough. And, yeah, that definitely was the case. It wasn't impossible, but it was definitely a lot more frustrating here. Uh, but again, it's Metroid Prime 2. Uh, it's not my favorite. Like, of course, I like it a bit less than the original game, but it is just still a... Excellent, excellent, excellent first-person adventure game. Action adventure, first-person action adventure. I, I don't even want to call those games a, sh a shooters or anything because they're just they're shooting gameplay, but it's not specifically a shooter. <laughs> uh, Naruto Clash of Ninja Two. Now, of course, growing up, uh, Naruto was the series that got me into anime and all that malarkey. And so, obviously, I would have to get the games for it, uh, fighting games, specifically. These are definitely, like, the progenitor of the modern anime fighter. Uh, and by that I mean they're very simple, with dumbed-down story modes, and not particularly deep. 
but still a lot of fun. Because, uh, especially 2, which had, like, more characters and more just things to do in it. Because I did have the original Clash of Ninja, like, a while ago. Uh, but with that and a bunch of GameCube games, uh, we had just sold them on eBay because uh, I was stupid. Actually, no, the only one I actually regret selling was a Kirby Air Ride. Uh, because my dumbass could not get into that game. I don't even think I would still like it that much, but... Uh, just kind of regret selling it anyway, because that's... it's pricey. It's now pricey. Anyway, Clash of Ninja was just a lot more worthless with two uh, in our possession. Uh, but yeah, I think this is still a lot of fun. Uh, it's a, it had a halfway decent looking game as well. Um, and I think I realized this came out like half a year after the original game. Cause like that show did not become popular in the States until like the mid 2000s. Uh, thanks to Cartoon Network and Toonami and all that junk. And yeah, I uh, have not gotten into any other anime fighters besides the My Hero One's Justice since then. Alright, next up, uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. Now, I originally wanted Underground 2, because uh, I got this at TMG as well, but I couldn't find it. Either that or I mistook that for this, or mistook this for that. As you'll see in the next segment, I, again, I love Need for Speed. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite racing series. Uh, and from what I played of Hot Pursuit, it does like seem a bit dumbed down. I keep saying that dumbed down. It seems like a bit more simplified and not quite as complex as other entries in the series. Uh, but I've not played through all of it, and I don't know, it still seems uh, like an interesting game. Uh, from what I can claim, it just seems like burnout with actual cars, so not quite as fun. Logitech Force Feedback. Oh, that's interesting. Bush, Uncle Cracker, Rush, Rush. Uh, ooh, they even have the soundtrack list here. Uh, One Little Victory. Oh, okay, that was from the Vapor Trails album. Well, that'll be one thing to listen to, unless I just put in my own soundtrack. Okay, um, <laughs> here's the one with the, uh, stupid-ass GameStop cover. Um, they have a bit more personality than the modern ones. This has Need for Speed Most Wanted. There, can you see it? You can see it. Uh, this is still to this day my favorite Need for Speed game and one of my favorite racing games of all time. It's just a great mix of arcade action and fun racing. A little over long, but I just liked it that way. And the cop chases were a wonderful time. I had this entire map memorized in my head. Because uh, my buddy and I played through it on our uh, the Dead LP channel. Uh, ages ago, and we still had a lot of fun. I would like to get the 360 version of this one day, preferably in the original box. Um, but, uh, yeah, this one we'll definitely have to do for now. Now the other stack. Starting off with... <laughs> Odama. Um, this is one of the more obscure GameCube games, uh, but it was still published by Nintendo. And it was made by the... I think it was the Seaman guy? But, but anyway, this is a... Pinball... Warlord game. I've heard it's not great, but it is exceptionally weird, as uh, most games by whatever the fuck this guy's name is. Um, Huge Saito? I think that's his name. But yeah, anyway, nice to have this in the collection whenever I get around to it. It is sure to be a grand old time. Right, now we got the Pac-Man Versus and Pac-Man World 2. Uh, pack. I've seen so many copies of these. Uh, more than the uh, uh, Pac-Man World 2 standalone. Because um, uh, Pac-Man Versus, that's the one where you have to use a bunch of Game Boy Advances to uh, play as the Pac-Man. And then in the actual game on the GameCube, on the tele, on the tele you play as the ghosts in order to get uh, rid of the Pac-Man. Designed by Shigeru Miyamoto exclusively for Namco and the Nintendo GameCube. Well, sadly, I've never actually played uh, Pac-Man Versus. Uh, I would always like, stick the disc in and then be greeted with the, oh, you can't actually play this. You have to plug in the, your Game Boy Advances and the Game Boy Connector, uh, which we didn't have. So I always went with Pac-Man World 2, uh, which is a fun, fun, fun platformer. Uh, very janky, but uh, definitely 
kind of scratches that collectathon itch uh, up to a certain point at least. I've never actually played through the whole game. I think I only got as far as the lava levels and then I just kind of quit there. Uh, who knows, one day I'll probably go through it. Um, maybe get Pac-Man World 3 and then uh, just play through the whole trilogy. Uh, so yeah, remember me saying I'm not a big Pikmin fan? Well, got Pikmin 2 on the GameCube, so still have some, I still at least have some interest in the series if I still have this around. I played maybe a few hours of this, because again, I've had this thing forever, but I've never gotten through the whole game, and I don't know, I think this box art is fucking great. Uh, the game itself is yeah, not really my cup of tea, but I, one of these days I'll go through this and just, I guess the Pikmin series in general. I know some people don't like it as much as the original Pikmin, uh, but some people do. Um, still, nice to have it in possession, and I don't have to pay like a hundred bucks or whatever to get a, another copy, even a used one. Now, this one is a bit of a personal favorite. Uh, Pinball Hall of Fame, the Gottlieb Collection. This is just a collection of pinball machines, tables, or whatever the fuck you want to call them, uh, from the company Gottlieb, or Gottlieb, or however the fuck you want, however the hell you pronounce that. And yeah, it, it's just solid recreation of those classic tables, and you just you just play them, you just play as much pinball as you want, and got some got solid physics, and they look great even on the GameCube, especially that first that first one, uh, Eight Ball Magic or whatever the hell it was called. Yeah, this is just a fun fun little pinball collection. Uh, there, are, of course, more of them, and I think there's. I don't know pinball, but yeah, this uh, it's different. It's I can't even remember how we got this in our possession. I think there was just a bunch of copies at uh, the department store. Uh, then we just got it one day. I can't imagine this didn't sell that well, but uh, uh, it's a bit of a solid gem, uh, underrated gem. Okay, we're gonna start with this now. Uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got this as a kid, um, and I think I got through, halfway through a campaign, because this is a weirdly, weirdly structured game, even for a Sonic, even for a Sonic game. I haven't played it since then, I remember enjoying it as a kid, but I'm not sure how much I would enjoy it today. Uh, I do know the GameCube version does run better than other versions, from what I, from, from what I remember. <clears throat> But yeah, it's just funny to think back on this and just wonder what Sega was trying to do during this time. Because this was still around the 15th anniversary when all those Sonic games were coming out. I did have Sonic Riders once, because um, I think that one got sold uh, as well, because I just didn't have any interest. Uh, that was, the, I guess, another one that I kind of regret selling. Because they're going to be on a bit of a Sonic train now, because we got Sonic Adventure Director's Cut. Uh, highly regarded. GameCube version of the classic Sonic Adventure for the Sega Dreamcast. Um, now I've played the uh, PC version of this all the way through, and as a kid, I was not too keen on this one, um, but it was, it was at least a, f a fun little time. Even then, Sonic Adventure, like, it's fine. It's fine. I have more fond memories of the sequel, which we'll be seeing in just a second, but yeah, it's not exactly like my cup of not exactly my cup of tea, especially this version. Sonic Adventure 2, uh, which is in this terrible GameStop cover. Even to this day, I still prefer the sequel to the original Sonic Adventure. Uh, but even then, I still think it's just fine. Uh, like, it's not great, not terrible, uh, but yeah, it's fine. I just, I had a lot more fun with this than the Sonic Adventure. I just like the more straightforward structure, level by level. Didn't have to bother with the stupid overworld Sonic Adventure. Uh, so yeah, um, let's keep on with the Sonic train with Sonic Heroes. This is an interesting game, but I just, again, I, I never really quite got into it, because another Sonic game was just a really weird structure. It has its highlights, but d definitely nothing I would probably go back to. I can't even remember if they have the have this on PC. I mean, I know they have the, had it on PC back in the day, but not, I'm not sure if they had it on Steam. Uh, you know what? It was this and Shadow the Hedgehog, I don't even think are on Steam, because it uses renderware, which I don't even think it would be that difficult to get them on there, but, eh, whatever. 
And then we have the Sonic Mega Collection. Uh, this was, I think, the most popular of the collections. Um, uh, or at least one of the more popular collections back in the day. Because it has uh, the first four Sonic games and then a bunch of miscellaneous ones. We got original 2, 3, and Knuckles. Then got 3D Blast, Spinball, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Never played this very extensively. Um, and uh, I... Especially with the GameCube controller, which the uh, fucking analog stick in a 2D platformer, that's just a, a recipe for disaster. But still a halfway decent collection. Um, the games at least ran well, or em were emulated well. Okay, I think we're done with Sonic. Yes, uh, so now we have good old Spidey to talk about. Uh, Spider-Man 2, one of the best regarded Spider-Man games, um, even before the newest one came out. This was the one that people would often compare all the subsequent Spider-Man games to, because it was just that good, and again, played, played it during my youth and haven't picked it up uh, in quite a long time. I'm sure I would definitely enjoy it. I definitely do remember uh, enjoying spinning, uh, swinging around New York City and beating up a bunch of people. So yeah, uh, now that I got the Spider-Man for the PS4, I should probably maybe think about going through this one before that just to see how it compares. Uh, it's, it's much preferable to playing Spider-Man 2 Activity Center again. All right, uh, next up, this was a mistake. Spy Sp Spider-Man. SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants. Now, this is a this is a bit of a weird SpongeBob game because this is essentially a Mario Party ripoff that uh, has a bunch of overlong mini games and a weird structure of uh, under the guise of like a TV show, kind of like Nickelodeon Party Blast, uh, but this one's at least a bit more competent. Uh, this was by developed by THQ Australia Studios. Yeah, um, it was not a whole lot of fun growing up, um, and I doubt I would enjoy it that much better. Uh, <laughs> I just, I don't know, I think um, of during the time I was just kind of like obsessed with the racing genre and crashing cars and such, and I think I saw a commercial of this, so like, I was like, I'm gonna get it for me, mommy. Yeah, I, out of all the Spongebob games, I just don't even know why we got this one. Uh, but I do know why we got this other one here, it's a Spongebob movie game. Because uh, this was another one of our first games that we got uh, with our GameCube. And I played it last year after playing the uh, Spongebob uh, Battle for B Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, just to see how it compared. Uh, this one's definitely more in line with the movie and a bit more linear as a result. Um, I think I enjoyed it about as much. Uh, as well, <laughs> there, there are some funny recreations of the uh, the SpongeBob uh, SpongeBob movie and the cutscenes in there as well. Um, but it, it's still a pretty fun platformer. I liked it growing up, and I still like it now, um, even if the mechanics are pretty clunky uh, to this to this day. A full blown triple A platformer. Man, these these pull quotes are just so weird. Next up, we have Spyro: Enter the Dragonfly. Ugh. Um, I also played this uh, during the my whole Spyro phase. I know this is regarded as the worst Spyro game because it has an infamous development cycle and uh, history. Yeah, it's not particularly good. I don't think it's the worst thing ever, though. I still bother to 100% it, which I can definitely say for more games, other games, that I haven't 100 percented and thought were not good at all. It would have been a lot worse. Um, it, it is pretty bad, though. I do remember it crashing a couple times. <laughs> Man, what a game. Uh, ooh. That's Star Fox Adventures. I don't think I ever went through all of this as well, but for as much as this game is memed, I think it's just fine. It's fine. It is very, very, very weird game, but it's fine. I do want to get assault at some point. I, I want to get an assault at some point on my on my rap sheet. 
Uh, Super Mario Strikers. Now, um, if you've seen the TMG video, you can remember this one is just beat to shit. Let me open it on the inside. Yeah, there's like fucking dirt and grime everywhere. And the disc. Oh god, this, this is a fucking nightmare. Like, look at this. Look, look at it. Look at it. And it still ran. Fine. So, I don't know why this runs fine and the Billy Hatcher game doesn't. Regardless, uh, Super Mario Strikers, not as good as the other sports games on the GameCube, but I also played this during my youth before I had gotten a GameCube of my own, and it's still a pretty decent soccer game, all things considered. Uh, I do think the sequel to this is a lot better, but we'll get to that eventually. So yeah, uh, nice to have that there. I remember getting that. It was in uh, amongst a bunch of other games that were like $20 or under, with the price tag said 40 uh, and when I showed it to the guy uh, I was gonna buy it from <laughs> and uh, told him that uh, he 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 was just not very happy with that somehow ending up in the pile because I, I I don't think it was supposed to be there it was going to be $40 uh, so I just I didn't barter with him I just paid him the 40 bucks for that game those uh, vendors, um, I imagine they get some shit from people, but... And they're just trying to make some bucks, man. Alright, now we got Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, now this was another one of our first GameCube games. And sadly, on our original GameCube, it does not run that well. If you start up a new game, and try to get past the intro cutscene, uh, or the first sequence, it just stops working. It does work on the Wii, though, so... Still play it on that. Like if it didn't have the 3D All Stars version, I could at least play it through that way. So that's a bit of a shame, but I think I've already said my piece about it. I think Sunshine's a really good game. Uh, maybe not one of the best Mario games, uh, but still had a lot of fun with it. I gotta clean this thing too. Oh no, here's a here's a fun little one: Super Monkey Ball 2. Um, <laughs> this one has uh, just all the Super Monkey Ball antics uh, that you would come to expect, and then just the endless amount of mini-games on here that are, like, decently made as well. Like, you got tennis, golf, fucking baseball, soccer, bowling, and um, billiards as well. Like, and they were surprisingly decent. Um, like, they're all in theme with Monkey Ball, so, of course, like... <laughs> Like, in golf, uh, you're just hitting your own monkey in the ball, and that's the golf ball. Yeah, I still have a lot of fun with this. Uh, I don't think I ever beat it as well, because, like, later stages get just fucking impossible. But, yeah, just a grand old time. I did have the original Super Monkey Ball, but we sold that, because this just had more than the sequel, so, I mean, the original, so why bother? Uh, and that was another one I kind of regretted selling, because I think that was a GameCube launch title? Um, yeah, it was like, the I think it was a launch title, was like, right after Sega had, um, just stopped developing for the Dreamcast. What else we got next? Ah, uh, Tech and the Great Juju Challenge, the third entry in the Tech series. And, uh, the only one that, uh, my sibling and I played, uh, because this is a co-op focused, uh, action-adventure game, and I will adamantly defend this game, because we had a a lot of fun with it uh, growing up. Like, even to this day, I think uh, he, uh, we could just go through it and still have a lot of <laughs> grand old time. We got to the last boss, but we got so fucking annoyed with it. But yeah, it's uh, def definitely worth your time, uh, if, especially if you can get on the GameCube. Almost there. Alright, Tales of Symphonia. Uh, this is the second Tales game I've played, because I, pl I have played Abyss, which was on the 3DS, but um, I never got through that. I did get through this, though, and it was a pretty good time. I had a, lot, I had a good amount of fun with it. wouldn't say it was one of my favorite RPGs. Combat was really, really good, though. I, I just think the story was uh, kind of underwhelming, uh, even with the some, some halfway decent characters and characterization. But, um... Yeah, I uh, definitely want to play more Tales, game after, Tales games after that. And then we got uh, Teen Titans. Uh, this was a, another beat-em-up kind of game, and um, super obsessed with the TV show at the time, and just, of course, had to get the game. 
And you know what? It's it's a, it's a mindless but pretty fun uh, beat em up. Like it is very very chaotic though, uh, and a bit overlong. But it does have a pretty funny funny fourth wall breaking ending. All right, and um, that is it for the GameCube. Ooh, what could this be? Just hiding behind the GameCube games the whole time. Bunch of Game Boy Advance games. Except not really, because, like, half of them are Pokemon games. More than half of them. A while ago, I got all five of the Game Boy Advance Pokemon games. Um, and, uh, I've only played through Emerald and Halfway of Leaf Green. And, uh, the only real reason I got this because I was intending to get all the Pokemon and then try to transfer them to the later generation so I'd have them in there. And, uh, that didn't pan out particularly well. Bit of an obsession that I come back to every now and then, but at some point I'm just gonna have to, I don't know, maybe sell these or something, because I, I really don't have that much interest in it. But you know what, they're still staying here for now. And the other Game Boy Advance games that I have, uh, we got Mario and Luigi, Super All-Star, Superstar Saga. Uh, I played this after Bowser's Inside Story. I've never beaten this, but uh, it's still a very, very fun RPG. And, um, and we got Castlevania Circle of the Moon as a launch title for the Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Advance, I believe. And uh, this is the only Castlevania game I've played to completion. And grand old time. I thought the final boss was a bit of a pisser, but I, looking at the strategy guide, I managed to get through it. I really like the car combination um, mechanics as well. And then we got the two Metroid games that were on Game Boy Advance, uh, Zero Mission and Fusion. Uh, Zero Mission really fucking surprised me. Uh, I, I think this is probably one of my favorite Metroid games, like it's maybe top three. Um, if only just for that sequence towards the end where you get the plasma beam, because that one is just done phenomenally well. And then Metroid Fusion, which is a really, really good game. Definitely uh, has a bit more of a narrative focus and a bit more linear, but it's, it turned out better than Other M did. So yeah, that's all the Game Boy Advance games, and now we can just, eh, you know, just keep them here. Keep them here for fun. Make room for the uh, shit ton of Wii games that I'm going to be showing off now. Actually, before that, uh, we got to take care of the fucking Xbox games. Even before that. Gonna talk about this. This is the uh, Game Boy Player disc. At a, uh, I believe I had gotten uh, the Game Boy Player for Christmas, but I didn't get the disc that came with it. <laughs> so I had to buy it on eBay, and I just kind of keep this around, kind of collecting dust, because uh, I really just got that thing more for the novelty, and maybe at some point in the future, like I guess recording Game Boy games. Um, and maybe in HD without using an emulator. Although I'll probably have to end up using that anyway. Alright, uh, let's go through the Xbox, Xbox, and the 360 games. Okay, uh, again, before we talk about the 360 games, we're gonna talk about the two Xbox games that I have. First, we got Burnout 3 Takedown, the Platinum Collection. Uh, it looks fucking ugly as sin. This is my favorite Burnout game, and one of my favorite racing games ever. Like, I played this last year, and it already took that cake. Uh, I was just very taken aback by this thing, and just how much fun it is. It's a great, solid gameplay loop. And I even bothered to get all of the medals, and all of the gold stars, and... Jeez. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Yeah, excellent, excellent fucking game. Sad it didn't come to the GameCube. And then we got uh, Destroy All Humans. I remember playing a demo for this thing like the longest time ago. And I'd gotten this in anticipation uh, for getting the remake. Uh, but I just kind of never got around to it. Uh, although I do want to, as well as the other games in the series. Because this is an, it's an interesting series. Um, it's another one of those things that ended up on a bunch of other consoles. And uh, most of them are not very good. But, yeah, it's be worth maybe doing a little retrospective someday. But who knows. Anyway, on to the Xbox 360 games. First up, we got Blur. Uh, this was a critically adored arcade Mario Kart-esque racing game with uh, 
just, I guess, re more realistic cars and taking place in realistic locations. And um, I've not played this, uh, but I, I I just got this because I, I have a feeling at some point I'm just going to have to admit that I really, really like just arcade racing games and such. Like one of my favorite genres. If I had gotten a PS3, I would have all of those MotorStorm games because those those things are the shit. But yeah, I'm sure this will be a heck of a good time whenever I get around to it. 55 license photorealistic cars with advanced damage. I don't think it's sold that well, um, unfortunately, but uh, this, I got it anyway. Uh, this is Burnout Revenge, the 360 version specifically. Um, this doesn't have a whole lot of a difference between this and the PS2 or Xbox versions. Just looks a bit better. I guess runs a bit faster, or it's supposed to. Uh, this one actually didn't run particularly well. Nor do I think it is as good as 3. Maybe a bit better than the first game, because it still has the crash mode and uh, all the other modes, but it's one of those games where like, the more of it you play, the more annoying the difficulty gets. Like, not f yeah, frustrating, but not, not impossible, but just... It gets to a point where just each second mission, each mission or event feels like just hitting a brick wall over and over and over again. And just, it just kind of gets tiring after a certain point. I believe I was trying to get all the medals here as well, but I think I just got to the point where I could get to the credits and that was it. So yeah, still a lot of fun, but not my favorite. Sid Meier's Civilization Revolution. It's a, a very simplified version of Civilization 4, I believe, for consoles. I remember just seeing footage of this and it was it was pretty fun, but um, I don't think I'd be that interested in playing it. I do like Civilization. I'm not like the biggest fan. Like, all I really need is just Civilization 5, and that's that's pretty much it. And then we got Conan the Barbarian beat him up. Uh, that was on consoles during the mid 2000s, and it was the the good Conan game. And uh, I've not played it, uh, but I do know it's pretty much a God of War ripoff. But uh, uh, whenever I get around to it, it'll be a nice old time and get to see some big old titties. Dishonored Game of the Year Edition, which has all of the DLC. Um, I don't know, I might actually try to go through this uh, version specifically just for fun, but uh, I've not played Dishonored. I do like stealth games, um, although I'm a bit more inclined to Hitman and just kind of that style. Uh, regardless, I think I would have a decent time with this if I ever get around to it, because it has all the DLC and a halfway decent cover as well. So, yeah. And we got the Elder Scrolls Legendary Edition. Uh, not played uh, Skyrim in any capacity, and that will continue to be the case uh, forever. And then we got uh, the Evil Within. Not as not as good as the uh, next gen versions, because of course that's how a lot of the previous gen versions for these like in between games were. Is there a bunch of those? That's a really interesting contrast to think about it. Like, when you're, they were still making games for the PS3 and 360 when the PS4 and Xbox One had been out for, like, over a year by that point. Like, I remember uh, Shadows of Mordor. Uh, that was a particularly uh, big, big bust um, in regards to that. But, yeah, I don't think this would be a terrible version to go through, though. I don't remember it being that reviled but probably just worth it to get the newer versions. And then we got Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition. Uh, this has all the DLC and uh, everything else, uh, and it actually runs halfway decently. So uh, if I get around to it, I might just go through this because I, I just I just don't want to have to download those stupid mods again uh, for Fallout 3. And we got Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition, which also includes all the DLC and such. It's interesting that we have all of this, because, uh, like, the more I like playing PC games and such, so, but, um, I guess there's just something nice and simple about the console version. It's like, you don't have to do any extra work or anything, but it's just all here, and it all mostly works. And I've heard New Vegas is, like, one of the best uh, Western RPGs ever, 
uh, thanks to Obsidian and their very, very good writing. So yeah, this will be fun to go through at some point in time. Now for a game I've actually played. Uh, Far Cry Instincts Predator. This is a very strange game. So, the original Far Cry game is a PC-only title by Crytek, and um, published by Ubisoft, and you know, you know what Ubisoft loves to do, they love to milk the hell out of franchises, and they were doing that back in the day as well. So they made a console version of the original Far Cry called Far Cry Instincts, and then they made a sequel to that a year later uh, called Far Cry Evolution. No, Far Cry Instincts Evolution. And then for the launch of the 360, or should I say a year after the launch of the 360, they just decided to keep milking a, just a bit more. So what this is is just an enhanced version of Far Cry Instincts and Far Cry Evolution. Uh, and it's funny because I believe Evolution was released on the same day as this. So, I mean, unless you, you, you only have an Xbox, like, the version to get is pretty fucking obvious. And I'm not too fond of the original Far Cry, because I think it's aged quite poorly. Um, I wasn't exactly fond of either of these games as well. But I think Instincts is a bit better, because it has a better build-up. And Evolution has some fun mechanics, but I just got bored with it at some point as well, even if it was a shorter game. So yeah, um, I mostly got this just because it's just such a weird, weird, uh, and often forgotten uh, entering the Far Cry series, which has since gone on to become this huge franchise, uh, one of another one of Ubisoft's milking machines. Not quite as milked as their other games, but speaking of Far Cry, I've got Far Cry 3, which I believe is just the original version. I don't think it has the, any of the DLC, uh, but I do have it on PC, so this one's just completely worthless to me. Um, pretty fun from what I... Um, have heard though, uh, so it'll be nice to get around to. And then Far Cry 4, a free limited edition upgrade and exclusive Sandman 1911 pistol. Uh, is there anything else to it? Three additional single player missions and the Impaler Harpoon Gun. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I've not played this. I don't think I have it on the PC, but I'd probably get either that or one of the new newer generation versions because this is another one of those in between games, between generations, uh, that they just had to release on past consoles just to keep making as much as they can before it became obsolete. I've heard it's not quite as good as the other Far Cry games, uh, but eh, it takes place in the mountains, so I like those kind of environments, and so that'll be fun to go through. Oh, Gun. Uh, this was a very recent purchase, because uh, I'll be playing through this uh, for a video at some point in the future, and I tried playing the PC version. It was... Uh, not, not not very good, so I just got the best console version, uh, hypothetically, that I could. And um, there's a launch title for the 360, and it's one of those games I was always really curious about, because look at this fucking box art, it looks awesome. And uh, just from f footage I've seen, it looked like a lot of fun, like a fun little third-person shooter action-adventure kind of thing. So yeah, it'll be nice to actually finally go through this after all this time. Got, uh... Bunch of other games that I've not played, but I believe that they're uh, either console exclusive or I just I not very interested in getting the PC version or whatever. Uh, this is Hunted: The Demon's Forge. Hunt Hunted is a fantasy action game that delivers a fresh take on the classic dungeon crawl with the intensity of a modern day shooter. Is that really the best way to describe it? Eh. Kingdoms of Alamar: Reckoning. I believe this is no. From the minds of R.A. Salvatore, Todd McFarland, and Ken Rolstein. I think this is like their take on World of Warcraft, uh, but not or some Warcraft thing. All these, all these fantasy RPG games just kind of blend in for me. All right, now we have another game that I got um, myself uh, because fucking duh. This is the. Mass Effect Trilogy on the uh, 360. Uh, I know that they're going to be remaking these, um, not remaking them, but putting out newer versions of it uh, later in the year, but I saw this just kind of sitting on the GameStop shelf, and I just, just kind of had to get it, because it was all three games, and yeah, you can tell with this big old bulky box, and big ass... Ugh. 
Look at this shit, man. Now, funnily enough, when I had gotten this uh, and gotten home, I opened it, and the discs weren't in there. So I had to go back and yell at them to put in the goddamn discs. Uh, I didn't actually do that, but uh, it was a bit of a goof on their part. Tried playing the first game back in college, but I could not really get into it. So uh, this will fun be fun to go in blind. Just, uh, I don't even know what kind of campaign I'll be doing. Maybe one where I make the worst decisions possible and just fuck everything up. Sure, why not? Uh, then we got, uh, ooh, now we can start with uh, the Need for Speed games. First we got Need for Speed Carbon. This is another one of those in-between games, but this is the past generation from 5 to 6, I believe, because this was um, on the on just every console in 2006, like PS2, PS3, Xbox, Xbox 360, GameCube, Wii, PSP, DS, Game Boy... I, I think it might have even been on the Game Boy Advance. Anyway, I always thought this was going to be just like nighttime most wanted, and... In most respects, it is, but I think this is a an inferior version of Most Wanted. Um, not just because it takes place at night, but I don't think the mechanics are as interesting. Like, I think they had partner mechanics where you could uh, take... Like, you had three different kinds of partners who could do different things during races and cop chases. But like, there was only one actual useful partner that I used throughout the whole game, and I just got through it fine. Um, but the worst thing was... like. The cop chases were just completely pointless. There was no reason to get into them. There weren't any events that um, centered around them like there were in most one. It was just all racing, which is fine, but if you're gonna have cops in there, then fucking use them. Then we got uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Now, this one is a lot better. Uh, and this is the first one by Criterion as well. And yeah, it is a grand old time. But, uh, I also had the same issue with it that I did with Burnout Revenge. Uh, it just gets to a point where it just, you're, you're hitting a brick wall over and over and over again. And once again, just doing that consistently gets very tiring. Perhaps just the mentality of going through these games with the intention of 100%ing them or completing all the events that you can complete uh, is not the best idea. But, damn it, I think even just going through this normally... Uh, was going to be a fucking avenue of frustration and pain. Uh, still pretty fun, though. And we got Need for Speed Rivals. Uh, it's another one of those stupid in-between games. Um, but I've heard this version is actually a lot worse than the next-gen consoles. Kind of reminded me of, again, Most Wanted and the best games in the series the most, besides Heat. Um, which I'll probably play before this one. Uh, you know what? I can't imagine it'll be completely terrible, but who fucking knows? Then we got Need for Speed The Run. Now, I think this is the one I'm going to be playing next, because uh, it always, always intrigued me. Um, this is the last game by EA Black Box uh, before they went kaput. And I don't think it's regarded that well, but just the idea of going like a cross-country street race is just a fascinating idea. And who knows, maybe the story will actually be okay. And we even got the limited edition, which includes... Bonus content, like the all-new Lamborghini Aventador. Porsche 911, who gives a shit? Speaking of disappointing, Need for Speed Undercover. Uh, this is the latest one I've played, uh, and... <sighs> this is kind of sad. Like... It is so fucking easy and just non-threatening. I just, what the fuck happened between this and Carbon? Like, Carbon is not even my favorite in the series, and it's a shit ton more fun than this. There's even a bigger focus on story, but the story is just complete generic garbage. Yeah, um, it was a bit of a shame that they kind of went this direction. Um, I think this was after Pro Street as well, which, uh... Uh, just, I, I especially don't care for that one, um, or at least the version that I have. Anyway, uh, we got Portal 2 on the 360. This is the game that I got just for that one video I made. Um, but, you know, it's still nice to have. Um, and even on this version, it's still Portal 2, uh, which is still a lot of fun. I should probably get the orange box at some point. That'd be nice to get. And then we're back to the games that I've not played. Well, technically I haven't played this version, but... Um, 
I've I played other versions. Uh, it is Resident Evil 5. Now, my buddy and I uh, went through this last year uh, on the Switch, and it's definitely not as good as 4. Um, or Revelations, or either Revelations games for that matter. Like, God, especially towards the end, I, I was just fucking sick of this thing. Ugh, so many goddamn zombies. I, I just couldn't handle it. Nope. And then we got um, one with the the blandest GameStop cover ever. Uh, this is Risen. This is the pirate RPG that I have not played, but I know this is also on PC, and this version is a lot worse than the one on PC, so... Uh, we'll see if I ever get around to it, just if I'm completely bored, which I never am. I games all the time that I never get to. Um, but let's get to the sequels. Uh, because we got Risen 2, the special edition, which has the, uh, DLC packs and a double-sided poster. Let's see if the poster is still in here. Oh, God, this thing hasn't been open in years. Haven't heard great things about it. Um, might be fun, though. And then we got Risen 3. Uh, Risen 3. Risen 3. <laughs> we got Rockstar Games Presents Table Tennis. Uh, talked about this one in a recent video, and it's definitely table tennis. It's most definitely table tennis. I just kind of miss the days when Rockstar would make just these off, off games. Um, like you have this, and the Warriors, and before then they had games they just kind of sort of published and not wholly developed themselves, like uh, Max Payne and a State of Emergency. But um, yeah, this is definitely one of the more unique games in their series, just because it's fucking table tennis. Um, but uh, yeah, it even looks halfway decent for a like the first game they made on their Rage Engine. Um, unlike the little bit I played of it for the footage I got for that Manhunt 2 video, it was, was alright. Alright, then we got Sonic O fucking shit. Ugh. Yeah, I played a tiny bit of it, and it's not as it's Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. What more is there to say? It runs better than the PS3 version, I guess. Then we got Sonic Unleashed on the 360. More Sonic games. Um, it's it's fine. I don't like it as much as the adventure games. Um, may, later levels I found very annoying, so I never completed it. Um, back of the box is covered in cum, though, so that's interesting to note. Then we got Split Second. Um, yeah, again, another arcade racing game. One of the weirder ones, because this is published by Disney and made by Blackrock Studio. I, rem I can't remember what else they made besides this um but it's like uh the game that the racing game that takes place in an action movie because you got a bunch of set pieces and things that will blow up and create new paths on the race track i think it will be a very fun time when i get to this as well don't you topple over you piece of shit I have this perfect tower going here, and I'm not going to let you ruin it. Now we've got Star Wars The Force Unleashed, the 360 version. Now I've played the Wii version of this, as you'll see in a bit. Um, and I think this one's, like, the slightly better version from what I've, from what I've heard. Uh, I've not played it, though. Um, but it uh, definitely seems very, very technically sound from all the engines that are back here. And, um, yeah, uh, it's a decent action game, uh, with Star Wars and everything. Then we got Tenchu Z. This is a Xbox 360 exclusive entry in the Tenchu series, which is another, uh, stealth series. I played the Wii one, I believe it's Shadow Assassins? Shadow Assassins. I enjoyed that well enough, so I decided to get this. I played a bit of it a few months ago, and it... It felt very, very, very off. Um, I'm gonna try to get through this at some point, but there's just something about this that did not fully click with me. 
Uh, and I've heard it's uh, not even critically well regarded as well. So, yeah. And then the last one, The Walking Dead Season 2. Um, another one of those in-between games, I believe. I played through the first season, or like half of it, the first three episodes of it. Um, so maybe whenever I finish that, I'll play this one next. Or if I don't get the Switch version, or the PS4 version, or wherever. Oh, God. We're almost there, folks. It's got the home stretch going. This is gonna fucking suck. Oh, boy, so many Wii games. So, uh, the Wii game library is the most extensive one that I have, because it's such an interesting library. Like, you wouldn't really think, but there's just so much shit that was made for that system um, that are it's just so interesting. It's just such a great time for Nintendo and third-party uh, developers as well. Like, even with all the shovelware crap that was released on that system, there's just so much interesting stuff here. All right, so, of course, uh, the two little tiny ones, um, you got Wii Sports and Link's Crossbow Training. I mean, this one came with the Wii, this one came with the Wii Zapper. Uh, just, of course, you gotta have Wii Sports if you have a fucking Wii. Uh, if, if you don't, then you're a dummy. I should think about getting, like, that player select Wii Sports, which I imagine is, like, $50 at this point. But anyway, let's get to the actual, actual, regular-looking Wii games. Starting with Boom Blocks. It's a lot of fun. It does get uh, kind of frustrating at points, but I just, just the the simple satisfaction of watching a giant tower topple over um, will always appeal uh, to anyone. Really, um, it's a solid, solid game. Put you over here. Next up, uh, Bully Scholarship Edition. Like I've gone on and on about this version, uh, but yeah, it's uh, just a really, really great game for Rockstar. Another one of those games that I uh, kind of makes me kind of makes me miss uh, old Rockstar. Just when they were innovative and just not sitting on their laurels, uh, letting the cash come in. And then we got uh, speaking of shovelware, uh, Chicken Little Ace in Action. Uh, now, I do remember we sold a fair amount of uh, our uh, Wii games, along with the GameCube games, uh, when we did that. For some reason, we kept this one around. And I think it was because we just kind of sort of liked the gameplay. I've not played it since we uh, originally uh, gotten it. But, um, hey, they got Adam West for the... Uh... It's kind of sort of like uh, the like uh, what they did with Rise, from the Rise of the Underground, or the Underminer. Rise of the Underminer. That sequel to The Incredibles. Again, it's just a fucking weird decision uh, to do, but, you know, I just, just kind of make whatever. I mean, I've heard it's okay, but I don't even know why I still hold on to it. Uh, next up, here we go. Destroy All Humans, Big Willy Unleashed. This is uh, the version that they put out for the Wii, uh, and this I believe I got this for the sibling's birthday. And they played a little bit of it and uh, did not care for it. And from what I can glean, not a lot of people seem to care for this one either. But I think it's better than the 360 version that was released, at least. It's be fun to go through at some point in time to see how shitty it really is. Next up, Donkey Kong Country Returns. Um, big fan of the Donkey Kong Country series. Like, two, uh, really all three of them are some of my favorite games of all time. Uh, the original trilogy, at least. This is pretty good. I do think the control schemes are not quite ideal. Well, actually, no, the Wii Remote combo is fine. Uh, God. I feel like I should recreate that fucking thing I did in the, the stupid Crazy Evens Gaming Life video. Uh, with the... But anyway, yeah, it's still a really fun platformer. I think some of the levels can get a, a bit obnoxious at, at points. They're just not quite as tight. Uh, as they were in the original, um, but it's still a lot of fun. Uh, now we got a bit of blah, blah, blah. Ellie Bits, um, this is a fucking weird one. It's, uh, kind of like Katamari, but you play as a, a, a little kid in first person, and you have a gravity gun and you just go around 
finding all the elements in a specific room. And, um, like, I think the more that you get, the more objects that you can pick up. This really is just Katamari, um, but even cutier, and not, I guess, not quite as weird. Very strange. It's not a bad addition to the library, I would say. Uh, so, got Epic Mickey, uh, which I believe is still exclusive to the Wii. First one, at least. Um... I remember how much hype this game got, and just how everyone was so disappointed by it. Oh man, I feel bad because it just had so much going for it that it just did not deliver. Um, according to many, because again, I've not played this myself, but... Yeah, it is, uh, will be a very interesting time when I do. As well as the sequel, because I got the Wii version of this. Now I know this was also released on the Wii U, and the 360 and some other systems, but I just got the original Wii version because you, ha you have to have the pointer controls for this, because that's just the best way to do so. And I've heard this was a bit better than the first one, but I know some people also think it's not as, not, not, even not as good as the first one either. So, again, another mixed game that um, also spelled doom for the developer Junction Point. Uh, so, yeah, that's unfortunate. And next up we got, uh Far Cry Vengeance. Now, uh, I got this, um, a little bit ago, like last year, I believe, after playing through the Far Cry game, um, that I talked about earlier, Instinct's Predator. And, uh, this is, I believe this was a launch title for the Wii, or at least one of the first games that was put out for the system, and, uh, yeah, it's not very good. Uh, I got through like four hours of it, and it, it was just fucking garbo. Like this is one of the most critically reviled games on the system. Not quite as reviled as the, the, all the, the shovelware that was released on here, because at least they were trying. Like they actually, this is this is a remake of the second console game for Far Cry, the Evolution. Um, <laughs> It's, it's funny, because it's a remake of an Xbox game, technically an Xbox game, um, that they shoved in motion controls in and just kind of restructured the game around it and subsequently made it so much worse. Uh, it is just kind of fascinating, but not too much beyond that, because it is really that bad. Like, people say that the shoot or the pointing controls are probably the best part of it. Even then, it's, it's still not really that good. Ugh. And we got, uh, Fortune Street, uh, the Monopoly with stocks, uh, and, uh, buying up prop, because I'm really just buying up a bunch of properties and then, uh, playing the stock market game, which, um, I got this for, like, really, really cheap, uh, after it originally came out, because I don't think it sold that well. Yeah, it's, um, it was alright, and, um, I wish I could gotten into it more, but this is really another multiplayer-focused game. A bit too complex for, um, uh, the fam. So, yeah, it's nice to have it in the collection, at least. Um, I think that might be one of the only Fortune Street-esque games that came out in the States. Because I rem cause that series, uh, another series that's been out for so, so long, and didn't really have that big a following in the States here. Uh, but, yeah, I could be wrong. And then we got GoldenEye 007, the remake for the Wii. It originally came out for the Wii. And man, I think it's a pretty good shooter. Um, I went back to it uh, about a year ago in anticipation for the new Bond film, which uh, was supposed to come out around that time and is now is still yet to be out at this point, uh, time of recording. But um, yeah, this is pretty much very, very Call of Duty, modern first-person shooter. Uh, version of GoldenEye, but I still think it's a lot of fun. Multiplayer is definitely a lot of fun, too. Uh, this was the first online multiplayer uh, game that I got really got into. I suck in so much time into this um, before the servers went down. And, uh, yeah, it's still pretty fun to go through even to this day. I know that the um, uh, reloaded version is probably the better regarded one, but and just can't you can't go wrong with the original either. Then we got Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law. 
uh, one of the more unique licensed games out there because it's essentially they just took Ace Attorney and made it about Harvey Birdman. Now, I've not seen a whole lot of the Harvey Birdman, but I did play through all of this because I do like me some Ace Attorney, and even even that that kind of gameplay is just like really simplified here because like there aren't like a whole lot of stakes with uh, this kind of game. It's just because it's really fucking stupid. <laughs> but um. Even then, it was still a really fun game. Uh, really funny. Uh, fuck. Um. I just, I don't even know why. This is Kid Sports Crazy Golf. Uh, another sports game on, on the, in our collection here. But this is not, not, not. It's not a good one. This is a mini golf game made by Data Design. As most of their games go, it's not very good. Not at all. We played like a bit of it, a bit of it back in the day, and haven't picked it up since. I remember we also had fucking basketball, stupid basketball game. God, it was awful. Um, but I guess this one also sold well enough that they made a sequel with Wii Motion Plus controls. God, I, I, I can't fucking wait to find a copy of that to see how bad that is. Um, yeah, no, the controls are fucking terrible, and I just think the whole new you me ripoff character creator is so pointless i guess they put a bit more effort into this than their other games but uh still not good uh then we got kirby's dream collection the special edition which uh i don't know why it's special because there's only one i got the box for it up there and so they just put this separately though let's go show off that box this is a really nice cover and it's just a collection of uh, six old Kirby games uh, made for, uh, just put on the Wii. And uh, it's a better collection than that Super Mario All-Stars thing that they did. And they even got a nice little soundtrack. Nice little soundtrack that came with it. I think I played through this and Kirby's Adventure. Um, not the other ones though. Like, not even Superstar. Uh, but I should at some point. It's me fun to go through because Kirby's a fun little series I know I've been like oh Kirby's so overrated why does everyone love him but like he's, he's fine especially when you have games like Kirby's epic yarn how can you fucking hate this series how can you hate this guy uh this this is just an adorable game like for as simple as it is it's, it's just it's, it's it's cute it's cute as the developer name implies it is a very good feel game um, I, for some reason they also put it out on 3DS, but it's just best on here, um, and not a crappy little console, crappy little handheld version. Then we got, uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland. This is that GameCube game that they stopped making and then they redid and re-released it on the Wii. I think this is regarded as one of the best Kirby games in the series, uh, cause it has four player action. It's definitely one of the pricier games I've gotten for the Wii. Because, uh, it wasn't, didn't sell particularly well. I think they only had, like, a limited batch. Um, but, yeah, I still just got it anyway because it was really, it's a really, really cool piece of, uh, history. Cause just because of the history behind it. It's really neat. Oh, man. Alright, so here's the last story. Now, this is a very interesting game. This is one of those games that the Operation... Rainfall, Operation Rainfall, um, uh, they pushed for this to be released in America alongside Xenoblade Chronicles and Pandora's Tower. Now, I didn't get Xenoblade Chronicles until eons later. I did get this around the time of its original release in the U.S., though. And I played through about half of it, and it's a pretty fun action RPG. Uh, some interesting characters, interesting story, very simple to story, but, um... Uh, the, there was a, enough personality here to kind of distinguish itself from other RPGs. Um, especially the ones that the creator, Hironobu Sakaguchi, made. Um, yeah, uh, I can't really say anything else bad about it. I do want to get Pandora's Tower at some point, though. That's the only one of these games that I... Of those Operation Rainfall games that I don't have. And I've heard uh, Pandora's Tower is probably the, the weirdest one of the bunch. So yeah, that'll be fun to go through. I should probably go through last story again as well at some point. 
Then we got The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. This is one of my most anticipated games uh, during high school. Like, fucking hell. Um, and I played through it, and you know what? It's fine. I still like it. Like, I know a lot of people think it's one of the worst Zelda games in the series, but... It, it, yeah, yeah, it is. But even then, it's still fine. It's a good game. Just really like it. I still like uh, how it looks. Um, I still like the characters, and I still like most of the dungeons, um, even if it does feel very padded out towards the end, uh, especially in the middle. I just, I just, I, 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 I can't, can't say no to this, especially the HD version. That's fucking 60 FPS, man. I'm still gonna chop up that to bits. That was definitely a... And we got Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Uh, this is the Greatest Hits... Greatest Hits? Nintendo Selects version. I had a uh, Twilight Princess uh, when I originally got my Wii, but it was, I borrowed it from a friend, and I had also borrowed the uh, guide as well, um, which I read the guide well before I actually played the game, so I pretty much spoiled myself in the whole experience, but I didn't give a shit. This game looks cool, and it is cool. Um, this one specifically, I only got past the third... No, the second dungeon... And, uh, just kind of stopped. So, not a whole lot of time spent onto this one specifically. But, um, I mean, I, I've played this thing so many times, and... I don't know, something, something, something about just, just... Just how formative this was growing up. Um, might just crawl right back to this at some point in the future. And next up we got Lego Batman, the video game. I actually got quite a few Lego games, uh, uh here, and, um... Didn't spend a whole lot of time with this, but I feel like I should uh, play a bit more because I mean, Lego games are just, just they're they're fun. Like they got way oversaturated, um, but this was still before that happened, and uh, just there's something just endlessly charming about the series, like, even in the ones that are kind of crappy. And then we got Lego Indiana Jones: The Original Adventures. This is the one that um, came out before the fourth film. This is still pretty fun. Uh, just a fun, goofy little recreation of all the uh, Indiana Jones games, but in Lego. And, yeah, you can, I just, I can't say no to that. And I especially can't say no to Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Now, we had the first game and the second game uh, on GameCube, but we sold those because we had gotten this afterwards, and that was probably a better, a, one of the better decisions. Because you just have you have all the content in here, all six episodes. I think this is the one where you can make your own character as well. And <laughs> uh, man, like I I have a, a fondness for this one specifically, and I relatively interested in the remake that they're doing, especially with that weird camera angle. Um, I don't know when they're it's coming out though. I thought it was supposed to come out last year, but still got a ways to go. Then we got Man 07. Fucking Scott the Wasp signature. As I made him sign this, I, for I forced him to sign this at TMG 2019. Uh, kidnapped him and took him to the, the Atlantic Ocean and forced him to sign this. Anyway, uh, this was uh, the Madden game that I really got into. Like, I went through a whole season and got all the way up to the playoffs and then just stopped. Uh, but, anyway, regardless, I still had a good time with this. Um, I think it's aged halfway decently well. Uh, the only real reason I went back to this because it had my favorite, uh, iteration of the Bengals team. You got fucking Carson Palmer, Chad Johnson, TJ Hushmanzada, just all the best players. And I think this was during their best season as well, before Carson Palmer got his fucking knee blown out. Fuck you, Steelers. Anyway, we got uh, Mad World as well. I played through this a year ago, uh, having owned it for several, several years before then. And yeah, this is... Weird to think that this is Platinum Games' first actual game before they would make the ones that they're more well-known for. Bayonetta, Metal Gear Rising. Yeah, this is still just a solid beat-em-up and fucking gory and bloody as hell and we love it for that i love it for that i should say interesting story too like surprisingly heavy story uh speaking of heavy uh manhunt 2 um as you might know i'm not particularly fond of manhunt 2 but it's still a fine game especially the wii version 
Can't really say much more about it. Just, again, very interested that this thing exists to begin with. I know they re-released uh, L.A. Noir on Switch, but I'm still waiting for them to, one of these days, release it on the fucking... on a new Nintendo console, one of their games. I was waiting for GTA V to be put on the Wii U. Alright, uh, we got the crappy GameStop covers for Mario and Sonic of the Olympic Games and Mario Sonic of the Olympic Winter Games. I'm going to print out co actual covers for this at some point in the future because I want to make a video on all of these just Olympic games just to see how well they hold up. They probably don't. But these things like sold gangbusters back in the day, so of course they were just going to keep making and making and making them. But I was always kind of interested in it, so get around to it one day. As well as Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games. I've heard this is actually one of the ones that's actually decent um, because of the, what was it called? The dream events that were in there that are just kind of fucking bizarre platformer-esque sequences. And like, the, you got a fucking nice ass yellow cover. Uh, it kind of ruins the whole collection thing, but you know what? It's, it, it looks, it looks really cool. I like, I like how it looks. Next up, Mario Kart Wii. Now, this is the Mario Kart game that I got really, really into. And, um, God, put so many hours into this. Uh, a little bit in the online as well. And I know it's not one of the better regarded Mario Kart games out there. Uh, but just sometimes I do just kind of like to go back to this and just kind of reminisce and play and just remember how much fun I was having back in the day before adulthood hit. Wii Will and everything. I think my favorite combination was just the Wii Mote and Nunchuck. Uh, all the other ones can go fuck off. Oh, nice. Uh, we got the new play control Mario Power Tennis. Because um, that's what Nintendo would do with uh, Wii games uh, and other GameCube games that I guess would go well with motion controls because they did for this and the Pikmin games and Metroid Prime as we'll be seeing in a moment. But uh, yeah, this was the version of Power Tennis that I played, and the motion controls fucking suck ass. <laughs> oh man, just like, god, why would you, why would you fucking do this? Uh, I still had a, a fair amount of fun with it though, uh, but I think I would probably just stick with the Wii version, or the, no, the GameCube version. And we got Mario Sports Mix. Now, I was actually really excited for this one uh, when it originally came out, because like, it had four sports in it! And they were all, like, fully featured and fun, like fucking dodgeball, volleyball, basketball, hockey. And, um, when it came out, played the shit out of it, I, I had a lot of fun, even though they all did kind of sort of play very much the same. Like, they were all different sports, but they played pretty similarly. Um, and it was also developed by Square Enix, so there were a bunch of Square Enix characters in it. There was some Final Fantasy, and I think there were some Dragon Quest characters in here can't remember but yeah it's not a it's not great but i still had a decent little time with this it's it's fun it's fun it's fun and we got probably i don't know if i would say this is my favorite sports game ever but it's certainly up there um i mean mario strikers charge this is one of the most chaotic sports games i've played i've spent so much time with this as a kid i would even like make like a season mode on my end because there wasn't really much of a season in here and I would just have all the characters like be pitted against each other and then have these rankings um jeez I played this so fucking much and I really really enjoyed this I just really really enjoyed this especially this cover this cover is fucking great I will kick any of your asses in when playing this thing guaranteed and we got Mario Super Sluggers uh, which I heard is not quite as good as the GameCube version, but uh, I played the demo of it a while back and had a decent time with it. I uh, haven't played it since, but I can't really imagine like how much worse this will be. Maybe the motion controls uh, kind of maybe hampered it. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, it's, I can't I can't really see this being terrible or anything. So yeah, just keep it. Then we got Ma me, me. Keep, keep wanting to say Monster Hunter, but that's not coming up for a while. Metroid Prime 3. Corruption. There really is no point of getting this um, if you had Metroid Prime Trilogy. 
but um, I still just got it anyway. It's not like there's really much of a difference between this and Metroid Prime Trilogy, but yeah. Um, Prime 3 is not exactly one of my favorites in the series. Um, not even one of my favorite Metroid games, but it probably has my favorite story of the Prime series, maybe in Metroid in general. And I say like the, the, like the backstory, the bits of lore that you get, not the story itself. Although it is very well presented. Uh, it's a bit more linear than uh, the other Prime games though, so not quite as fond of that. But I'd still enjoy the hell out of it. And it's, again, it's at least better than Metroid Other M. Um, I remember this getting on the cheap like half a month after, half, no, half a year after it had come out because no one wanted this game, nobody did. Uh, and it's it's such a disappointing thing and even then I still like it like I, I still like the gameplay um, I mean I know the story's not great it's not even not, not good not even good but I don't know I can't really bring myself to get that mad at this uh, just maybe just disappointment of course then we got Metroid Prime trilogy I bought this completely on a whim like years and years ago and like way before it became a, a, a sought after collector's item but this is still honestly this is probably my favorite thing I have in my collection because uh, it's got the fucking steelbook that is falling apart by the seams but it is just so cool and it's got the little art book as well Ah, just fucking, fucking look at that. And look at this, there's like a, like a story description as well. Man, once again, this was another thing that I read about on endlessly, endlessly before I actually had played the thing. And, um, I think I got, I had finally gotten through the original game first, and then two eons later, and then three eons later. But yeah, like... God, this is probably my favorite collection of games just ever. Yeah, it's just so very near and dear to my heart. Then we got uh, another game that's kind of near and dear to my heart as well. MLB Power Pros. How can you... How can you not be interested in that? It even has, like... Like, a weird, uh... Like, story dating sim manager thing going on in it. Because, I mean, it's not... It's not American-made, obviously. It's from... Japan. Fucking Konami published this, but they... 2K came out and published two editions of this, and yeah, it's uh, very simple, very easy, but uh, I still had just a, a great, great time with this. I would still probably enjoy this uh, playing it today as well. Yeah, I really, really like it. Now we got Monster Hunter 3, or Try, or whatever the hell you want to call it. This was the one that kind of skyrocketed uh, Monster Hunter's uh, popularity over here in the States, even before World did. I, again, could never really get into Monster Hunter, especially this one, because it just, just felt so clunky and slow. But my sibling was just very, 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 very interested in this and played the shit out of it. And that's why they're interested in Monster Hunter to this day. And we got uh, My Sims. Kind of like a mix of Sims and Animal Crossing. Just like, and you're helping people out in this town, but you're also making all their items. It is fucking bizarre. But they also made a bit of a franchise out of it, because you got My Sims Racing, My Sims Party, My Sims Agents, which I heard is actually halfway good, halfway decent. Yeah, it all started with this. Um, I don't even know how, I guess it must have sold like a bajillion copies in order to get all those other games. Then we got eh, Need for Speed for a Street. Um, this is the legal street racing game. Um, uh, the, 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 it's really a code word for boring. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of this, or I'm not even interested in Shift or Shift 2 as well. The only real reason I got this was because I played a demo for it. Um, I believe it was the 360 version. And it just, the crashes looked great. like. You could see cars just falling apart at the seams, and but this is like through my dumb kid imagination, like way back in the day. And so I got the Wii version of this, and it didn't look nearly as good. 
I even I, when I was even on GameSpot uh, younger, I put a review there where I was gave a one out of ten. I was so disappointed in the lack of great crash visuals. <sighs> but yeah, all in all, it's just a really boring game. Um, not interested in playing it ever again, frankly. Uh, also not interested in ever playing it ever again is New Super Mario Bros. Wii, because I 100 percent at this a while back, and yeah, I like it more than two. Not quite as much as the original. I think uh, it is a very good game, though. Played a lot of this, uh, especially multiplayer, back in the day. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's a solid platformer, but definitely a bit showing um, less personality than other entries. Or actually, well, less personality than the first game, at least. And we got, uh, man, I keep forgetting to have this as well. Nicktoons, Attack the Toy Bots. This was the, uh, the third entry, I think? In that, uh, crossover Nicktoons game series that, uh, that started out, like, years and years before this. And then there's, um, Attack of the Toy Bots, which played a tiny bit of it and did not care for it whatsoever. And I doubt I would, um, care for it much more, uh, these days. It's an interesting idea, at least. Um, especially, they have Tack in here, uh, which they he didn't even have his own TV show until like uh, years after this came out. So yeah, interesting, but um, not really much of note. Uh, then we got Night's Journey of Dreams. Uh, I did not play this or the original Knights. Uh, the closest thing I've come to playing it is Rodea, the Sky Soldier, the Wii version, at least, and like. It's going to be interesting because I just hear so many mixed opinions on this game or no one really talk about it. And, um, yeah, I, I'm interested to see how. Uh, definitely cool that this thing even exists. Like, it's a sequel to a game that had come out ten years before. And uh, there was not another entry since then. And then we got uh, another... Uh, God. Stupid-ass GameStop cover carrying Ninja Breadman, although I think this is actually kind of fitting, because um, I only got Ninja Breadman for the novelty of having Ninja Breadman, and, it, and I don't even have the original cover. Oh. Look at that. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, you know what Ninja Breadman is. It's a shitty, shitty platformer from David Design that, uh... Is shitty and shitty and shitty and shitty. And then we have the Wii version of Okami. Uh, here it is. And let me see if we can just locate that IGN artwork. Yeah, there it is. Ugh. Let's see if you can find it. You probably can't. Yeah, I played through the Switch version of this last year. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I, I really like the presentation and just the visual style. Gameplay is fine. Um, and, uh, I think the, the thing was a little overlong, but still a really, really good game. I think I got through, like, half of this version, um, when I originally played it eons ago. And yeah, just kind of moved on, and, um, can't say, can't really say that this isn't, uh, a solid version, although it is just kind of sucky that they only credited Radio Dawn, um, uh, for doing the port job here, and none of the other, uh, creators for this. Um, it is weird, like, they re-released re that, but they didn't release fucking God Hand. I, I assume they would have the rights for that, at least. It's dumb. Oh my god, how did the Wii games get here? I didn't even move towards the shelf to get them. Ah. Next up, we got Rabbids Go Home. <laughs> uh, I've got the other Rabbids game. Games, too. Don't worry about it. I think this is an interesting game that, once again, I've not played, but... It just, it just came out at a time when everyone was sick of Rabbids, but it was also just a change of pace from the stupid party games that they had uh, been releasing up until then. Uh, and I'm interested to see how exactly this pans out. Maybe you can customize your own Rabbids. Eh. Yeah, it's really weird. But um, before we get to the other Rabbids, first we got to talk about Rayman Origins. This is a fucking great platformer. Just a goddamn wonderful platformer. Uh, looks great, uh, sounds great, and just a great return to form for Rayman after just such a long, long-ass hiatus. Can't really say anything bad about it. I don't think I have Legends, although I've been meaning to play that for a while as well. 
All right, then we have Rayman Raving Rabbids. We played a shit ton of this back in the day, and this was the one that still had Rayman in it. Very, very strange, strange party game. The, the only real thing uh, to note about this, though, is just uh, during the dance sequences, or the rhythm game sequences, they do a cover of um, a Hip Hop Array, and I'm 99% sure they didn't cut out any of the lyrics there. So, if you listen closely, you can hear, uh, in their version, it's like a high, the high-pitched vocals uh, just saying the S-word all of a sudden. It is, it's very, very bizarre. How'd that get past the ESRB? Durr. Then we got Rayman Raving Rabbids. Duh. And, um, it's pretty much just more of the same, except all over the world now. And, uh, not quite as fun as the original. Honestly, not not nearly as fun. And then we got Rayman's Raving Rabbids TV Party, which I've not played. First video game you can play with your bottom. I know that was the biggest feature, uh, the biggest point in that and the advertisement, because you can use the Wii Balance board to control some of the mini games. And just gotta just gotta just gotta wonder. Just let me fucking milk the shit out of this. Just as Ubisoft, as Ubisoft did, just made so many games of that. So here in this terrible, terrible GameStop cover is Red Steel, and yeah, uh, I got it just for kind of the novelty. I do like the cover, the actual cover of the game, it does look pretty stylish, but you don't even deserve to be held. The game is not good. Most controls are terrible, shooting is bad, and I got to a point where there are several cutscenes that had to be played in order to get to the next point of gameplay, and that point of gameplay, uh, if you lost, then you had to go all the way back and watch the cutscenes cut again. You couldn't skip them. So yeah, I got sick of that and just put it down forever. However, I also have Red Steel 2, which is a fucking massive improvement. Uh, and I think it's probably one of the best action games on the Wii. Even with the motion controls, which aren't that great, they're at least decent. At least decent, and really that's all you need. And I love the style, and I love the shooting. It just, just so much better than the first game. A little over long, a bit very repetitive, but uh, like the only, the, really the only Red Steel game that is worth playing. And I can't, I can't imagine, well actually I can't imagine why. I probably didn't even sell that well. Uh, so it hasn't been re-released since, which is a shame because it really is, it really is good. Like I was legitimately impressed. Okay, then we got Resident Evil 4, the Wii version, in this fucking beat-up cover here. God. Um, it's, it's Resident Evil 4. Great, great, great game. Uh, the Wii version has the most controls and junk, and um, works pretty well. Works pretty goddamn well. It's the first edition of Resident Evil 4 that I played. The only one, other one I played is the PC version. Ah, here we go. Rodea the Sky Soldier. Now... Really, this is uh, this GameStop cover was just kind of necessary, because otherwise it would just be the disc by itself. Because um, this game has a fucking tragic history behind it. Uh, it's made by Yuji Naka and his development studio, Probe, as their next big game on the Wii, but I assume they needed more funding for it, so they got Kadokawa Games to publish it and help more with funding. And... From there, it was originally supposed to be released in 2011, but got stretched into a four or five year development cycle and didn't get released until 2015. And by then, they had also uh, released a version on the Wii U and 3DS that was developed by Katakawa Games and not Probe specifically, and those games are complete trash. They didn't release the Wii version by itself, they only had it as an add-on to the Wii U version. And like, it's, it's really, really good. Like, I got this for three bucks. I had no expectations for it going in, and it's great, even. Like, God, I don't think I'd ever play it again, but it's a, like, a nice mix of, like, nights into dreams and kind of sort of like a, kind of like a rail shooter of some sort, but it's really well designed, very fluid, and just a whole lot of fun. Like, Again, a lot better than I was expecting. I am interested to play the Wii U version at some point, but I don't think I would have a very good time with it anyway. 
And we got Samba de Amigo, the uh, Wii version of this specifically. I don't think this is a port. But yeah, it's uh, another party rhythm game. Um, I'm interested to see what exactly will be in here and um, just how fucking crazy it'll get. That was my gearbox. Hmm. Interesting. Then we got uh, Su Sega Superstar Tennis. Again, I have not played this. However, um, I think I'll probably have a fair amount of fun with this. Um, hopefully the most controls aren't that, aren't that terrible. Yeah, it just has all the Sega mascots and franchises, even fucking House of the Dead, uh, just in here for a dumb little wacky ass time. And then we got uh, another one of the interesting uh, first party games on the Wii, Sin and Punishment Star Successor. This is a sequel to a Japan only N64 game, uh, Sin and Punishment. Is uh, Speaking of rail shooters, uh, this is a full on rail shooter that is just fucking ballistic and chaotic as hell. I have not played it, but I've seen. Seeing just watching people play is just a fucking marvel of action. Um, as the developers, Treasure, are apt to do, they also made Ikaruga and uh, plenty of other action titles, really solid action titles. Yeah, um, I, I'll get to this one day. One day I will get to this. Um, try Maybe try to find a way to play the original version too, but even though it was re-released on Virtual Console, I don't think it's been re-released since, unless they put it on the Wii U. Uh, in which case, I'll probably get that before it shuts down. Anyway, moving on to Sonic. Um, ignore the five-pointed star, uh, the pentagram. Uh, it was for a stupid joke. Yeah, Sonic and the Secret Rings. I played through all of it um, a while ago. I don't know. I, I enjoyed it, honestly. I, I enjoy this, um, or at least I did when I did play through it. I've not played it in a while, but I, I don't know. I don't think I would fucking despise it. I know it's like reg regarded as one of the worst Sonic games, um, but I don't know. Uh, we got Sonic Colors next. Um, only played about half of this as well, but I had a fair amount of fun with it, uh, more than most other Sonic games. Um, hell, maybe, maybe about as much as Sonic Adventure, the Sonic Adventure games, like, because it's a solid, solid platformer. Not much more to say about it. Then we got Sonic Rider Zero Gravity, yeah, uh, I regret selling Sonic Rider, so I got the bad Wii version. I say bad, but again, I have not played this, um, I'll, I'm just, I'm just, uh, wondering what this is gonna, gonna end up being. I'm definitely curious to see how this is gonna turn out. Then we got Sonic Unleashed, the uh, Wii version, specifically. Um, again, it's fine. I like it about as much as the uh, HD version. This is the one I actually played, like, way back in the day, I originally had. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's okay. It's not great. Not terrible. Could be a hell of a lot better. And we got Star Wars, The Force Unleashed, which I already said my piece about uh, during the 360 showcase, so not much more to say there. However, we do have Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, uh, which uh, I know, again, there's another gap between this and the 360 versions. I've heard this one is fine, um, not quite as good as the original, but um, this one has a bonus code and mini hint guide. Um, I have to wonder if I would be able to unlock it. Oh, it's still here. Oh, God. I, again, I don't think I've actually opened this like the longest goddamn time. Um, or at all, I should say. God, it just, it just feels grippy, though. Ugh, I just need to, like, go at all of these games with a wipe. Alright, next up, uh, Super Mario All-Stars. The, uh, 30th anniversary, 25th anniversary, 30th anniversary, 25th anniversary. Edition. Just stuck a ROM on this disc and ask thirty dollars for us to pay for it, and uh, it's pretty fun. But I mean, I thought it would be a good idea at the time, but looking back on it, it's uh, it's nice to have. But eh. still got the uh, cover though. I've had a bunch of people sign for it. Um, it's gotten beat to fucking hell. And we got uh, Super Mario Galaxy One. I've already talked about this a little bit. It's 
probably my favorite Mario game. Not much more to say about that. Then we got Galaxy 2, uh, which I like almost as much as the original Galaxy. I think there are a couple of annoying levels in here that bring it down just a bit, as well as just the whole presentation. However, it's uh, still a really good time, and I think it was a lot better 100%ing this one than Galaxy, because in Galaxy you just did all of it again. Then we got Super Paper Mario. This is the first Mario Party game that I played through all the way. Uh, so I actually have to remember now, I, we did have Thousand Year Door at some point, but a friend borrowed it and they have not given it back for the longest time. I've been trying to get it back uh, just to, so I could fucking play because I do not want to buy a new copy because I know how expensive that thing is. Anyway, talk about Super Paper Mario. I played through all of this and I thought it was a very good game. Not one of my favorites, but it is a very good game. I thought it was way too padded in places, and the control felt very stiff for what they were trying to do, but the story is quite good, great even, and um, I still think a lot of the levels uh, were very cleverly designed and still a lot of fun. And presentation's great, as always, as is the music and other portions. And we got Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Biggest Smash game that uh, we were into, my uh, sibling and I. Yeah, uh, I know it's not very well regarded these days, but I could still have a pretty fun time going into it, especially the South Space Emissary. Emissary, Emissary. God. Oh boy. Uh, Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World. This is the sequel to Tales of Symphonia, uh, released for the 10th anniversary of the franchise. Um, I've heard it's it's not great. I'm sure it'll be a decent little time whenever I get to this one as well. I just think the funniest part of it though is they have the original character designs from the first game and then just a new guy on top of it and it does not blend well at all. Uh, someone tells me that was made for the ch on the cheap. Then we got Tatsunoko vs. Capcom Ultimate All-Stars. This is a crossover for uh, like Capcom characters as well as characters from the various Tatsunoko anime franchises out there, uh, of which uh, none I can remember or think of right now, but there are some, they all kind of look the same. But anyway, this was one of the best fighting games released on the Wii or so I've been told, so it was just interesting to just kind of get this for the collection as well. And I really like the art style. It just looks like it would be a fun little time. And we got Tenchu Shadow Assassins, which I already mentioned before when talking about Tenchu Z. Um, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. I would like to get the other Tenchu games later, though, for the ones for the PlayStation. And then we got uh, one of my favorite golf games, um, or favorite sports games, I should say, Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2010. This one I played the shit out of. I made a great custom character. Just made the fattest, fattest lady possible, and the fattest oldest lady possible, and she won all of the awards, all the championships in there. She fucking, fucking hilarious. But yeah, this is also a really fun golf game. Well-designed, recreated courses of real-life golf courses and such. Um, even has disc golf in there. Then we got um, Tiger Woods PGA Tour The Masters of 2012. And man, I wanted this so badly. Because it's just like the most definitive version. It have, would have the best motion controls. Um, and then I got it, played a bit of it, and never picked it up again. But I'm sure I will go through it eventually one day. Uh, and uh, in contrast to the other one, this one kind of smells a bit rosier. At least whoever had previously owned it didn't smoke. I'm almost kind of interested. You know, 23 championship courses included. Wow. So 24 in total, including the Augustus course. Interesting. Uh, we got Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam. Decently maintained for a launch title. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is a, again, this is a launch title for the Wii. 
Uh, it's pretty much just kind of skateboard racing. Um, kind of like what they're doing with that uh, skate anime series right now. Um, but uh, the best thing about this is that you would expect the manual for Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam to be in here, but instead, you get bamboozled. It is the Sega Bass Pro. Or Bass Fishing manual in there. Uh, at least the actual game's in here, so it doesn't really matter that much. First up, Trauma Center, Second Opinion. I've already said my piece about this. Uh, really, really good game. Better than the original, I would say. Then we got Trauma Center New Blood. I've still not beaten this thing uh, since uh, making that Trauma Team video. And uh, I don't think I will ever. Because, man, I just, I just did not care for that. And, of course, uh, gotta have Trauma Team on here. One of my favorite games of all time. And I really hope that more people play it in the future. Yeah, y'all are fans of Persona or whatever. This is my Atlas game growing up. Fuck all y'all Shin Megami Tensei bitches. And we got uh, Virtual Tennis 2009. I really, really like tennis. Uh, but like I've said, uh, I think it's better actually playing it than playing games that are based on it. it had a, I had a decent time with this, though. I, it's decently developed. Uh, motion controls aren't great, but... And then we got uh, Wii Play. Obviously, you gotta get Wii Play for that extra Wii Remote. And, um... It's a decent little collection. Uh, some games in here are bad, some are really good. Again, like Billiards, probably my favorite. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not much more to say about that. Then we got Wii Fit, because of course you gotta have Wii Fit. I have not touched this in quite a while. I don't even have Wii Fit Plus. But, yeah, I put a decent amount of fitness time into this. I even mean, learned a few yoga techniques, which I can do to this day. Wii Sports Resort. Uh, just, like, I actually got this only a year or two ago. Um, and, uh, I not, not put a whole lot of time into it. Why? I think uh, it is... A very good expansion of all the Wii Sports ideas that are in there. And just a great way to introduce the Wii Motion Plus. Yeah, and it also gave us Wuhu Island, and I like that uh, area a lot. And then we got, of course, you know, the Chronicles. Um, I had gotten this at uh, Too Many Games for, like, only 40 bucks, which is a fucking steal, because you know how GameStop was when they were selling these. Yeah, it's a shame, but I did play through all of this um, before the Definitive Edition came out, and again, those character models, fucking ugly as sin. They all look like they have goiters, but still a great game. And last but not least, um, probably my favorite trivia game ever, one of my favorite party games, You Don't Know Jack. I'm very happy that they have gone on to keep making games like these, um, with all the random-ass party games there, because this is just so much fun, um, and I kind of, kind of wish our family played it a bit more, but I just enjoyed this so much, and just, just the dialogue and the funny writing, and, um, I think that's about it, except for this, which is Zack and Wiki's The Quest for Barbados Treasure. Uh, this is that weird point-and-click adventure game, um, that was also, uh, that was released in the Wii, and early in its lifetime uh, that not a whole lot of people play for. I would like to get the original cover for this. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a fun game. Very fun game. Now we got just the Wii U games to deal with. All right, first up we have here Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Still in, it, in its shrink wrap because is one of the most worthless games I have in my collection. Is you need all the amiibo and all the Animal Crossing amiibo to even play the thing. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm just never going to, but I'm gonna have this because it was only three bucks, so why not? Uh, ooh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. This is actually a fun, fun, fun puzzle game. I really enjoyed this, and um, because I enjoyed the stuff that was in uh, uh, 3D World. So, yeah, I'd really like to replay this again at some point in the future. I think this is only one of the only Wii U games I'm going to keep um, and not get the Switch version. 
Speaking of other games that I don't need a Switch version of, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I think this is a massive improvement over Returns. Uh, I've not played this in a while. I don't think it quite reaches the heights of the original trilogy, although a lot of people have been saying this is like one of the best platformers of all time, uh, which is really interesting. But um, yeah, maybe uh, another playthrough of this could change that. Then we have here uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is the version that I played. Funny thing to note here, there's a misprint on the back, like a, a massive misprint. So you could only control this game with the Wii U gamepad, but if you had looked back here and didn't know any better, you'd also think you can control it with the Wii Remote Nunchuck, Class Controller, and the Wii U Pro Controller. Again, I'm 90% sure this is just a terrible misprint, but I've not actually tested any of this stuff, so who knows, it could, it could actually work with these controllers. And then we have uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. Bit of a disappointing HD conversion, however, I still got it and played through it all, and um, really I'm just happy they let you keep anything you get from the treasure chest, and they didn't force you to put whatever you took back in if you didn't have room for it in, in your inventory, especially with the rupees. Again, one of my favorite games of all time, and hell, you, you got you got to admit, this cover is pretty cool. And we got uh, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. And now this is the one that I went all the way through with, and this is the, the actual HD version that looked really good. And they kind of simplified a lot of the, uh, the structure in here, especially the later uh, with Triforce shard hunting and such, and yeah, I had a really, really fun time with it. And we got Lego City Undercover. God, just look how look how faded this cover has become. This wasn't a launch title, but this is also one of the, I guess, the better regarded games on the Wii U. I believe it was re-released on Switch recently or a while back, um, but I'm just gonna keep this around. And then we got. Uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games 2014. And may as well get this one here too. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games 2016. Rio and Soshi. So I have a funny story about the 2016 one. I bought this with the intention of giving it to Scott the Waz at TMG Games, uh, sorry, TMG 2019. Like, he had mentioned in a video that he didn't have it, so I thought, oh, you know what, as a fan, I'm gonna buy this for him and just give it to him at TMG. It's one of the, it's, I don't even think it's regarded as that good. I was it's just, it was a lot scarcer than this, so yeah, of course. It's gonna be more expensive. Um, and yeah, as it turns out, he was just gonna get a copy of his own, which he, I assume he eventually did. So yeah, pro tip, you can get games for your favorite content creators and other people, that's totally fine. Uh, but just don't, like, go completely all out for it. And especially, don't forget to bring it the day that you were going to give it to them, as well. Anyway, uh, Mario Party 10. Um, now this one... I just, I just, of course, I had to get it. I've not even played this. I'm not even really that interested in playing it, because uh, I think this is regarded as the worst Mario Party. But one of these days, I will be interested to see just how, how exactly they fuck this up so badly. Oh man. Then we got Monster Hunter 3: The Wii U Edition. Now this was the one that was. I can't remember the difference between this and the Wii version, other than updated graphics, but. I think there was a bit more to this, and I think this was the one that uh, my sibling really, really got into. I haven't played this. Don't really care either. Anyway, here's a game uh, that I have played. Need for Speed Most Wanted U. Uh, this is the Wii U version of Need for Speed Most Wanted. Um, the only Need for Speed game on Wii U. And uh, yeah, it's a reboot of Most Wanted. Not a great reboot, because uh, it's... It's like Burnout Paradise, but there's less stuff to do in it, and the racing is not nearly as fun. And they could have kind of sort of made that kind of game with the Need for Speed structure in mind, but they didn't. It just it comes off as a lot blander than the original Most Wanted game did. You don't even get to fight against a poorly acted gang. Uh, there's not even any undercover cops who will portray you at the end and then save your life for some stupid reason. And we got New Super Mario Bros. U with New Super Luigi U. And um, I have played through New Super Mario Bros. I think it's my favorite. I think it's my favorite, like right, right above DS. Like those two are just kind of, ah. 
Uh, they're interchangeable. I've not played New Super Luigi U though, uh, but I have heard it is uh, pretty good. And we got Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, which is the uh, enhanced version of the wonderfully regarded um, uh, Ninja Gaiden 3, the 360 and I think the PS3 as well. Uh, but yeah, this one they just fixed everything uh, that was wrong with that original game. I've not played it, I know they're re-releasing it for Switch as well as uh, Ninja Gaiden Black, or Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1 and 2. I can't remember what they're called. Um, yeah, this, this is a weird fucking series, but I'm probably just gonna go through this because I'm not really that interested in Ninja Gaiden. I just think it's a interesting novelty because that was also a launch title for the Wii U. Um, it's just so weird. Then we got Nintendo Land. Uh, this came with the Wii U. Did not play a whole lot of it, and it's unfortunate because it is a very well-designed and fun experience that was in clearly intended to be what Wii Sports was for the Wii, and it just did not pan out that well, which can pretty much sum up the uh, entire existence of the Wii U. All right, then we got Paper Mario Color Splash, uh, which I've heard is better than Sticker Star, but I have not played it yet. I can't really see myself enjoying it that much more, but maybe, maybe, maybe I will be wrong. I just, just, like, I'm not even a Paper Mario fan, and I just, I just feel sad looking at this. Next up we got Pikman 3. Um, not, I played, like, 30 minutes of this, and I was like, oh yeah, this is kind of interesting, and then I haven't picked it up since. So it's just a lot of games with me. I'm kinda curious about maybe getting the Switch version, but I already have this and there's not really that much of a difference between this and the Switch version. I think there's a new campaign, but uh, yeah, we'll just, I have this already, I might as well just Then we got Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Wow. Of all the Sonic games I've played, this is probably the worst one. I have like this is my least favorite like I I got more into Sonic Chronicles than this I got more into Sonic in the Secret Rings than this like I beat Sonic in the Secret Rings or I bothered to finish it this one is a fucking complete mess and even when it's not non-functional it's just boring and dumb like I remember specifically with like there are so many technical problems with this game like my experience ended on just this horrible glitch that would require me to reboot the system in order to get out of it. And I remember specifically getting a cutscene that was nothing but static audio. It hurt my ears. I have footage of it. I'll play right here. It fucking sucked. Then we got a uh, Star Fox Guard, which was the companion uh, to Star Fox Zero. Uh, only like two bucks or something like that, and I'm keeping this in my... Uh, in its drink wrap as well, because I do not want to play it. And then we, uh, probably been wondering what the fuck is in here, since we may as well let the cat out of the bag. It is Star Fox Zero! Then we have Super Mario 3D World. Um, this is probably the only game I'm going to get on Switch that I already have for Wii U, because of Bowser's Fury. Um, but I haven't played this in the longest time. I did go through it, finish it pretty fun. It's more interesting to see that people are regarding this and kind of other Wii U games like more and more as time goes on as like really really good. Uh, then we have Super Smash Bros for Wii U. Really stupid title. Uh, this was the siblings game. I did not play this at all. Like I played like maybe an hour of it total. Uh, nothing really here ever grabbed me and I just moved on to Ultimate and haven't looked back. And even then I honest. I haven't played much of Ultimate either, because I'm not really a Smash fan. Then we got Tank Tank Tank, another launch time for the Wii U. Uh, not that well regarded, but I can't imagine it'll be completely terrible. You can use the fucking Wii wheel to control this. How, how can it not be bad? Then we got, uh, ooh, yeah, <laughs> I think this is another launch title. It's Tekken Tag Tournament, the Wii U edition. Again, I got this more just for the novelty than any real interest in Tekken, although I have some vague interest in doing so in like kind of looking at this because of course they have the Mario uh, themed characters and other Nintendo stuff 
Best-selling fighting franchise of all time. Really? And we got uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X. This is the sequel to, uh, or should I say the follow-up to Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, and it's a very, very strange game. It's more memorphagory than the original Xenoblade game was. It had a lot of online components, and the world was fucking massive, and there was a lot of focus on just kind of like mining for resources in order to save your species. I did not pay attention to a lot of the story for this because I thought it was very bland, but I got really hooked on the gameplay, just going around and exploring and just fighting enemies, taking on missions. It was a very relaxing, very fun gameplay loop that I somehow, I, again, I had no idea how I got sucked into this thing. Um, I really don't see this also being re-released on Switch, though. It's, uh, very of its time. So, let's just, uh, just kind of forget about it, I guess. Then we got Yoshi's Woolly World. This is the true follow-up to, um, Yoshi's Island, or Yoshi's Story, whichever one you want to consider. I've heard really, really good things about this, and Crafted World as well. And, again, it's by Feel Good, so how, how can you go wrong with it? Then we got another launch title, Zombie U. I played a fair amount of this. Uh, I, had a, I had a decent time with it. Uh, this one was still a really, really cool idea. Just the idea of permadeath in a zombie apocalypse, which makes total sense. Um, even if it doesn't really give that much personality to your main character, it's still a great idea. Um, I might be a bit more interested in the later releases, which were just called Zombie. But, uh... Oh no, I think that one still kind of eclipses those. And then we have... Uh, this is a bit of a limp note to end on. 007 Legends, the Wii U version specifically, which I've heard is the worst one. I am going to be playing this uh, when it comes... Now, I'm going to be playing this when it comes time for the new Bond movie to be released. Uh, but until then, I'm just only going to be sitting in dread until I uh, have to play this. Uh, Definitely, definitely looking forward to it. So, that is it. That is all the physical games that I have. Like I said, I have some over the years that I've sold, some that I lost somehow. I need to find that fucking Apollo Justice game. But yeah, it's a... Uh, I'd still call it a modest collection, because even though there are a bunch of games here, it's like nothing with the room-filling. I would love to have a room-filling uh, amount of games, but... I just, I just don't have the space for it. Any of y'all got any interesting stories about games that you have gotten over the years? Put them down in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear about that stuff. Next time, we will actually be talking about this little collection here. The fucking vinyl collection. But yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you later. Ugh. Surrounded by games.